Thanks, Brian, for that one. <laughs> hey, man, we've all been there. Yeah. Uh, so funny, I was watching Twins last night. Hey, the Arnold Schwarzenegger wheels. vehicle? Yeah, and the, you know, the, remember the thing where he does the uh, goes up on two wheels into the parking lot when he's like driving for the first time? Yeah. That's the grocery store across the street from me. Ah. And they cut to the shot as he pulls in there. I'm like, that's my apartment. No way. <laughs> Living in LA. My uh, my brother loves to introduce me as uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger to his Danny DeVito. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, we're pretty much twins. Brian's got a TV show and does magic and travels all over the world and has kids. And he goes, I'm Danny DeVito. <laughs> Those two are not related at all. Know, Jay just likes to build up his, his bro. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Man, I'm bummed. I haven't, I, you know, I, as soon as you mentioned it the other week, I bought that Arnold Schwarzenegger book, but I haven't had, I haven't gotten caught up to it in my queue. Um, well, it's good, and I think Justin should listen to it because of all the political stuff. You know, it, it, there's a great scene where he goes to, uh, um, he just, you know, got done passing the. Uh, this referendum thing to like, you know, funding thing for this after school program, which is sort of a test pilot for him just to get involved in politics. And he goes to the White House to make sure to secure funding and he meets with Carl Rove. And uh, Rove was like, uh, like, what do you think about this recall effort about Gray Davis? And Rove is like, it's not going to get recalled. It's not going to get recalled. Uh, I was like, oh, okay. This is here. I want you to meet because this was like they're looking at like 2004, right? They're good. The, you know, the idea is they're going to recall Gray Davis and anybody could be on the ballot. And Arnold's kind of like, Hmm, interesting. Carl yeah. Rowe takes him over and says, this is Con, I want you to meet Condoleezza Rice. She's going to be the governor of California 2006. Ah, <laughs> you know, and like, so funny. Like, huh. Arnold's like, and he's like, they're telling me I can't do it? <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so, they're you know, saying Carl that like, Carl Rowe is a political genius, you know. Yeah. They're saying that I, they, they bet that I don't have a 13th rep in me. <laughs> well, you yeah. just wait. Yeah, so it's it's very interesting to see that the behind the scenes. He talks about going to meet Richard Nixon, like Nick you no know, Nixon, and so got invite, invited to go talk to you know just to go to a presentation there. He goes and meets Nixon. He's got his like nephews with him, Arnold's nephews with him, and Nixon. Nar Arnold, Nixon's like, hey, I want to talk with you. So he's got to bring my nephew. He's like, oh, of course, you know. They go back there, and he's like, Arnold, you really need to run for governor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, it's like, and then Nixon goes out to get some talks. There's somebody else I want to have speak is Arnold. And Arnold had no idea he was supposed to speak. And the next thing you know, he's speaking in front of, you know, a bunch of these, you know, old Nixon friends and people like this in the Nixon library. And so. Dude, that's very, amazing. Yeah, fascinating. And this is a guy that, you know, hang, hung out with Andy Warhol is, you know, he was doing his Warhol phase. And then, you know, Nixon. <laughs> private room with Nixon Nixon telling him he needs to run <laughs> that's amazing no I I'll, I'll get to it right after uh, right after uh, pimp by iceberg slip no. <laughs> all right guys I think I'm good to go Happy um, Monday. yeah I think I think I'm good to go too. you good Andrew oh he's sneezing so it's a little bit to, oh you know what I should as a preventative measure get some uh How are you doing, Justin? You it sounded like on Twitter your throat, your voice is a little gone. Yeah, I think I, I think I got sick. I think I'm sick, so I've just been kind of uh, rolling around in my bed and not doing much all day. I walked down and got a microwave pizza, like okay. that. But uh, other than that, not a whole lot. Mm. But well, uh, yeah, we so, hope for a speedy recovery. Yeah, I mean, I've been I, I've done well with it up till now. I feel like everybody else I know has gotten gotten got, but uh, oh, with the with the flu. Yeah, yeah, but I, I'm not. It's not like full blown, so I'm just gonna hope to kind of have a have a good uh, good day. I can't tell when, if I'm when, better. When off. did you first feel the symptoms? Uh, leaving for Florida. When was that? That was uh, Friday. Like, like, I woke up super early Friday, and I felt like, meh, I kind of feel like it's going to come on, but maybe I'll just try to keep hydrating through the weekend, and it actually felt a lot better throughout the weekend, and then I got back today, and it was just like, 
Uh, it was just one of those like your body uh, recalling the loans that they had lent out when you were like, no, but I shouldn't be sick for this weekend. Cool. And guess what? It's Monday now, bitch. Yeah, I kind of do the same thing with like New Year's. I'm like, ah, oh, I feel better for New Year. I feel better. I'm like, do went did New Year's. I'm like, oh, great. And then Monday I woke up and it was like, yeah. Uh, you're handling it better than I did because I was like, uh, I was basically comatose. Yeah, well, I hope to. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Uh, I'll have to watch out for that one. Uh, uh, well, I, I hope to avoid going totally comatose. And if I do, I'll make sure that I continue to drink water as the last time that I got sick was the, the famed poop faint, which did happen while we were doing this it show. Was very weird so. things. Put the mo- put your money in now, people. We're about to say the show. Oh. Not today, Satan. <laughs> uh, anything you need to send over before we start, Andrew? Uh, no, we would sort of do it live, and you you have you know the you know the Edgar's 2018 nominations, right? So it's not a problem. So <laughs> uh, okay, well if you guys are good to go, take it away. In yep. Three, two. Welcome to Weird Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young and Brian Brushwood. Our producer is Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi. Hey. Hi. Man, I like this. This is fast. It's time compressed. Let's get to the weird. Yeah, so I, first is a new segment we're trying on Weird Things called Why You Should Invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> we're, we're, we're right on time, man. Yeah, Ahead yeah, of that curve. No, no, we're not going to do that. Okay, how about why to short Tesla? No? No? no oh, wait, no, should we not... short Tesla? Oh. Hmm. All right, we'll just stick to weird stuff then. I'll totally stick to weird stuff. Bitcoin's um, pretty weird. It's, uh, uh, it's price fluctuations are weird. Yeah. I had friends like three weeks ago like, oh, you really need to get in. I'm like... I don't have the temperament for that. <laughs> three weeks ago was uh, three months too late. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm a couple months. I like literally was back in early December. And somebody's like, oh, yeah, you need to get in or whatever. And I'm like, eh, I'm not doubting. I'm just saying it's not my thing. It's not, I'm not going to have the temperament for this. And clearly I don't. Um, uh, what's that? Was it on this show we were talking about? Like, um, I want to say it was like J.C. Penney or Sears or Ford, Henry Ford, was saying that uh, shortly before the crash, um, he got stock tips uh, from his uh, shoe shine boy, and he realized once the shoe shine boys have stock tips, uh, the market is saturated. It's time to yeah. Get on there was out. another one like Alfred E. Loomis, I think, too, in Tuxedo Park. I think he talked about being in the elevator, and the guy running the elevator, you know, is like talking about stocks and stuff. And he's like, "This is not, you know, not to be an elitist thing, but it's like you realize that people who are spending not a lot of time studying or get into it." But right, oh, uh, I, I, the, that the the modern version of that was all my. Florida friends on our group chat. Now all of a sudden we're experts in uh, Ethereum. I'm like, mm. yeah. <laughs> like I'm not saying that. Like that was to say nothing about the the future viability of cryptocurrency. When they're hot into it, it is time to think twice. Yeah, and I think I think there is a future, and I think even for Bitcoin, I think that there's a floor, and I think there's so many people who have money who can't really pull it out because for. Because it's gambling money or whatever like this, I think it's a future in it. But it's just my argument says it's just too volatile for me. It's just a kind of thing where I don't have the temperament for it. But uh, you know, you know what I also uh, don't have the temperament for is awards shows. Uh, just in general, ones where I'm involved with. Oh wait, are you involved in an award show? Oh geez, is he? I mean, uh, this guy uh, uh, just uh, uh, being nominated all over the place. Congratulations to Andrew Maine for being nominated for an Edgar. Uh, you, you might know its name right. after Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> and Edgar Rice Burroughs. He was the yeah. silent partner in the Edgars. Yeah. Edgar yeah. Wright is rumored to be on the board of directors. Yes. Medgar uh, Evans. But, but yeah, no, uh, congratulations uh, you, on, on, your, you. on your nomination over the weekend. Yeah, so so Black Paul is the third in the Jessica Blackwood series. Is it common for later books in the series to show up, or or is that because it's built up a brand and a story, or or just like the other ones weren't as good, and this is finally the best one? Uh, I have no idea. Well, the second one, Name of the Devil, got nominated for the Thriller Award. So in in each genre, 
like in science fiction, like the biggest one is probably the Hugo, right? The mm -hmm. biggest one's Hugo, right? Thriller and Thriller, it's the Thriller Award. The International Thriller Writers, the big conference of them. So Name of the Devil got nominated for a Thriller Award, which was came as a complete surprise. That was really awesome. Everybody was really thrilled with that. And then the biggest, you know, is really the Edgars for mystery. And, you know, uh, you know James Patterson won for like the Berryman number or something like that in the 1970s. And that was sort of like a big thing for his curves that he won the Edgar for that. So the Edgars are huge for mystery. The third one getting that, I don't know. I, I have no, no idea how or why this happened. I'm thrilled, thrilled, thrilled beyond thrilled that this happened. And, you know, and also it's, we've talked about this before, like, I like the book. I was happy with the book. I put the book out there. Book did okay. They didn't really do like gang, but didn't do like naturalist numbers, you know. And I had fans who read it who really liked it. But then you're like, okay, that's what the book does, you know. Now I'm gonna go write another book. And then you're kind of like, maybe I'll do another Jessica at some point. And then, you know, in the middle of talking about naturalist stuff, all this, I get a call from my agent on Friday, and she's like, "Did you see the Edgars?" I'm like, "Or the the nominations?" I'm like, "What?" She's like. I got the list and somebody said, take a look. And I kept looking for the naturalist, but the naturalist wasn't there, but it was the black, it was blacklist or blackfall. <laughs> what, what, what an emotional roller coaster it was like for you to hear that. Like, oh, oh, so you're calling to tell me that the naturalist didn't get an award nomination. Well, I knew yeah. something. And then I got pulled up the list and I see those blackfall. And then it's, I'm, like, I'm like, what? You're like, you're just, it's more not even like, yeah, you're like, what's going on here? And then it's also, it's like trying to phase in because like the Edgars are, you know, my, in my role are big and my role are really, really big. So it's like, you know, of course it's one of the things I didn't have to explain to my parents what they are. Like, hey, guess what? Now I'm never Edgar. Okay. Like, no, it's really, Is that really like big. an Oscar? Is it kind of a baby Oscar? Did you get a baby Oscar, sweetheart? Yeah. Like last year, like one of the winners was Noah Hawley. He's actually nominated again this year. Oh, I mean, wow. it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's. Dude, that's huge. That's great. Yeah. I mean, go look at a list of some of the other people on there. Take oh, a look at some of the no, books. First of all, I, what I'm doing is I'm commiserating with the plight of any entrepreneur <laughs> no, who has right. to explain his... No, Brian, his... I'm very important. <laughs> it's just, you know, I as wrote your parents... A thing. <laughs> I mean, I know people are saving lives in hospitals and stuff and educating children and stuff, but I wrote a thing. I, I told a really scary story, <laughs> I Brian. I made a story. <laughs> <laughs> Edgar thinks it's great. <laughs> I, I made a story. <laughs> Yes, there are men and women fighting for our freedom all across the world. I understand that. But I wrote a story. <laughs> <laughs> what a strange world. There was this moment that, uh, uh, you know, for some reason, I managed to go like 15 years of thinking that, oh, Bonnie does art and I do magic. Uh, Bonnie does uh, something I don't understand. I do something very valuable to the world. And then, and then one day you look up and you're like, Oh no! Wait, we're both artists. We're both uh, comedians. We're both clowns, and uh, our job is to make the world a little bit happier, basically. Yeah, I had a. There's a thing, a project which may or may not happen. What happens will be interesting. If it doesn't happen, it'll be a funny story to tell. And 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 there's sort of is an element of danger <laughs> involved. And and I'm on the phone with people like this. Oh, you worried about? I'm like. My brother's like on the SWAT team, <laughs> you know, <laughs> my father used to go up against my father's name literally showed up on hit lists for international crime organizations and stuff like my sense of like my level of professional danger versus what I grew up with is. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the baby coward man, <laughs> you know, baby coward man. That's that's your rap That'd name. Be a great name for for uh, whatever comes of that story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> baby coward man. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, uh, you know, you know who's not a coward? Who's not a coward? The first person to ever be revived after being cryogenically frozen. Wait a minute. Are you talking about like when the Russians first tried open heart surgery and they did it by packing the body in in uh, butcher ice and then they would they didn't have a heart lung machine. So as they work on it, they would just take the open heart and just squeeze it to pump the blood you're talking <laughs> about that up guy to like a uh one of their big volga trucks or something like that <laughs> <laughs> that no that's that's a real thing i was I, I forgot what documentary i was watching on the invention of the heart lung machine and they were like it's this amazing technological wonder story in the united states and then in russia decidedly uh they used a pencil basically you know yeah yeah that story is completely 
<sighs> oh, wait, wait, oh, no, with the pencil. Wait, uh, are you talking yeah. about the heart story or the pencil story? The pencil story. Yeah. I hate that story because right. it is it is it is an it is the wrong lesson, the wrong <laughs> lesson, and it's this, all you need to do is a pencil and have loose graphite in your cabin that floats inside your eye or messes up with your spacecraft. And the whole, we never, the United States government never spent the money for the space pen. It was Fisher did that. You know, it's one of those, ah, here's a important lesson. It's like, that lesson's BS. So I don't trust you as a teacher, <laughs> and I don't trust how you're able to drive lessons from this. If, but, if, yeah. if you're not familiar that, with the that story. Was, that, was, that was Andrew's first day of third grade. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you're not much. familiar with the story, just Google space pen comma yeah. pencil and you'll see yeah. then you're like, you're like wow why did i do that andrew was just ranting i should have just ignored him <laughs> um so uh experts uh this is according to the reputable newspaper the daily star uh the incredible announcement comes from dennis kowalski first human frozen by cryonics will be brought back to life in just 10 years speaking of the daily star line dennis said that the technology is advancing so quickly that he can't keep up with demand so uh Basically, the idea is like we have this thing now where uh, and we've talked about this before, like the idea of like you know, one, don't call it frozen. They're sort of lowering the temperature of this. And how I was at a conference where talking afterwards, hanging out on the patio, you know, we're looking at this was in like a Jekyll Island, Georgia, and talking to some other guys who were big futurists and stuff like this. And one of these guys is kind of being skeptic of like everything and all that. And then the subject of cryogenics comes up and I'm like, yeah, like I'm like, I'm not against it, but I'm just like. Oh, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll wait, you know, and then one, they both look like, wait, you, you, they pull out their pendants, like you don't, you're not having yourself frozen, or you're not having yourself preserved, you don't have one of these. I'm like, no, <laughs> like this is, I'm like, in, a, in the one place in the world where they're like, what you, you seems like such a futurist, you well, know? This, man, it's weird how these little pockets of, um, uh, I, I, let's say, let's say, um overly exuberant optimistic belief happen or or uh skeptical blind spots uh it reminds me of the the y2k bug like the y2k bug was a different sort of doomsday proclamation because only the really really smart people who know about computers were the ones who were scared therefore it must be a real thing and of course it ended up you know not being a problem at all and likewise you know the really really smart people who understand a bunch of experiments um <laughs> one of the things that you said in that article is that the guy can't keep up with demand and it, it seems implied that because so many people want this we're surely going to technologically figure it out and maybe we'll someday but uh, something tells me probably not uh, in in our lifetime i i i wouldn't say not also, in our wait, hold on. i don't know isn't that kind of a punt not in our lifetime like that's just kind of like like that's just like uh, I don't know maybe uh, at some point and an and indefined number anywhere between you know uh, 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 fifty years and tomorrow. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be more bullish on this. All right. Uh, I don't I mean I don't think that actually it's a dumb idea if you want to have yourself like preserve cryogenically whatever actually because we talked about we talked about this on a previous show like you can have insurance policies pay for it and look they're like. If they're gonna call you dead and you got the money, then that's fine. We'll take it. We'll pay for it. It's not that expensive. Um, and considering the dumb things I spend money on, I think if I add up like you know, uh, all the stupid things in a month I do on the idea of having that, I, I don't have a, I don't have an issue with it at all. I, I don't, I don't know about the practical. I don't know enough to really have an informed opinion on it. But as far as the viability of it, we're learning a lot about. Regenerating tissue, we're learning a lot about how preserving things very, you know, cold, you know, preserving bodies in cold, lower temperatures, things like that. We're being able to do things. We have been able to revive mammals after like 45, 50 minutes. There have been more cases of like, you know, children who have been in snow banks, you know, for like eight hours that should be dead that were able to be revived. There's a lot of stuff, you know, in that area that. I'm hesitant to say that it's that far off, Brian. I don't know. I'm not based upon any like, well, I know this research is I, other than like, there's a lot of things out there. But you know, the the person who dies, they freeze them, or when we keep using the term freeze, it's not really freeze them, but anyhow, you know, the person who dies and then they take them back, they fix what's wrong and bring them back. I don't know. I, I don't well, know, but 
and keep, keep in mind, like I, I, I too am actually you're a luddite, Brian. We know you. Hate I tech. too am <laughs> actually bullish on this. I feel like if there's one thing you don't bet against, it's humanity. Humanity is all the numbers to zero. We've defeated everything, and yes, we have troubles, uh, but we're still kicking and looking to to bust out of this petri dish and make robots out of our future bodies and become ethereal space creatures, and it's going to be you, awesome. You got, I mean, like, like let's let's. Bryce, can you pull up the photo of, of the ripped Jeff Bezos showing up at the summit? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Jeff Bezos in 1999, I sell books. Jeff Bezos in 2017, I sell whatever the F I want. Yeah, yeah there yeah. it is. <laughs> so now he's, you know, now he's like J.K. Simmons, you know, in a you know action role. That is the richest man in the world. That is the richest man in the world right now. Okay. Uh, clearly... He has taken an interest. <laughs> he's walking away from an explosion. He has clearly cool guys, taken an explosion. interest. And it's funny the before like him and like Elon Musk, you know, like money does buy happiness. <laughs> uh, but richest man in the world, clearly doing some reps, worried about his you know the future, his health, things like this. And you've got Larry Page, Sergey Brin, you've got Elon Musk, all of them putting money into things that you may not directly call life extension, but really kind of are, in some cases, directly putting money into life extension, prom promoting that. And be like, oh, people have tried for years. The Chinese emperors did this. It's true. We didn't have modern tech. And for the longest time, you know, even, you know, there are parts of, the, there are people who are anti-promoting longevity. There's people in the medicine who are like, no, we sh you should die a natural death. You know, like, well, should we be sick when we do it? No, no, you should be healthy then die. Well, that doesn't really make any sense, you know. Um, but I, I think never my, my, we have this much, that is much that, capital like, put like, towards it. Uh, uh, all these things are impossible until they're inevitable, right? They're, they're, yeah. Like, very rarely do these kind of things go from, like, all right, well, we'll we're, we are very clearly at step three, and we will orderly make our way through four, five, six, and seven before we're close. It's always... This is never going to happen. There's a million very good reasons why this can happen. Oh, crap. Somebody figured out the thing that flips us to, like, nine. And then it's just a matter of iteration to get us to where, you know, the the, the, prom the great promise of this kind of stuff is. I love this Daily Mail graphic that they included to explain cryogenics. Ends with, uh, take maintains ultra low temperature, waiting for a medical breakthrough. <laughs> Step five is <laughs> dot, 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 <laughs> profit. <laughs> Also, and this would do nothing for the audio listeners, but there's like a silhouette of a woman that I literally thought was a puddle until five seconds ago. <laughs> you inject the puddle with a solution. Yeah, I just yeah. thought like, all right. You put the puddle in a box. By the way, there's a puddle march tomorrow, Justin. You should go support that and make up for your <laughs> telling you. Um, so. We've asked this question in different sort of contexts here, but let's talk about this. If you, if this technology was real, it was simple, like simple, it's like a booth, like a tanning booth kind of thing. You go in there, put a little mask on your face, breathe in, pass out, and you can set the dial a day, five days, a week, a month, a year. Wait, okay, wait. Are you talking about to, to uh, uh, for for our own benefit, yeah. uh, cryogenically freeze ourselves yeah, just can, to go you, into you the just, future? Just, you know, just hibernate. Just hibernate. Just a hibernate. Man, I don't know. I don't want to be, uh, you know, a, a super, super maudlin. I, I don't think I would do it for any amount of time. I mean, maybe, I don't know if there's like a movie I really wanted to see, but I don't know if there's any of those. No, well, I mean, like. Like here, I, it's I, it's four o'clock. Ash doesn't get home till seven, and you're like, man, that three hours. Like, I'll get that three hours back. Yeah, well, and plus, also think about this. Let's assume for the experiment that you do not age during that time. Yeah, no, it's you not don't. Just That's, lost yeah, sorry, time. Let me clarify. Yes, Brian. So I, I think about it this way: Would you? Uh, let's. I'll tell you what. As. If it was me, just for me, that that would be a very hard sell. But as I get involved with more and more interesting projects, and as my kids grow, and as my family grows, and uh, and as the business grows, um, it occurs to me like if somebody, if a genie showed up and said, "Hey, uh, you're gonna live X number of years," um, 
There's going to be a lot of really interesting stuff that happens after that that are all directly related to your interests. Instead of running a uh, 40 more years of whatever your miniature empire is, how would you like to get a good 60 out of it? And all you got to do is, uh, you know, you take weekends off. Well, what do you mean? It's like, well, uh, you know, Friday you just go to bed and then you pop up and then you go. And then all the things that you're waiting on, all the scripts that you had to wait for have written, written, all the edits that you had to have to wait to get done, all of the ad copy, uh, you you know, all the, the marketing and sales and all that stuff, that'll all be done. So you can make the decisions on Friday, pop in, suddenly it's Monday morning, you have results to work with, you can instantly give feedback on that. Uh, the only thing you'll notice from your life is other people will seem to age faster than you. Um, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Well, I mean, that, that, would, that, would, that would be a feature, not a bug for, for, for many. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, they would call uh, it like Cryo Tuesday Wednesdays, <laughs> you know, yeah, um, day cryo. Say, yeah, the only thing I would say that that you should totally not uh, that you should you should be doing those uh, uh, cryo days Wednesday Thursdays right after night attack. You go under <laughs> Wednesday Thursday. You make all your business decisions because if you make your business decisions on Friday, and then you wake up Monday, no one's gotten the stuff that. Oh, Probably good, good point. All right, all right, fine. We, we, listen, uh, ha call Susan. Work on my schedule. Let's set this up. <laughs> Uh, but but I could I can see that being a lifestyle that if you could afford it why why wouldn't you do it and of course um, we've talked about in Orson Scott Card's book uh, the Worthing Saga uh, in a similar situation uh, they uh, it was the sign of the most elite and powerful that they would wake up for one day per year like a Lady Gaga or a Madonna level celebrity and and they would be famous for a millennia uh, and they would wake up for one day and everybody would watch everything they did uh, I would not like that that that's would be horrific i think in that world this real scenario is you come back and nobody gives an f who you are because there's <laughs> like, like a million new stars great. and then one day you wake up and there's just rebar poking out of the rubble around you <laughs> or you wake up like hey everybody i'm here like oh no we're all big fans of old man brian <laughs> yeah <laughs> old man brian he stayed with us he stayed with us. <laughs> you know? Although, wow, think of the logistics of trying and to do And you just do like old people's comedy routines, you know? So I'm fishing, and the worm's back there on the hook water ski. You know, nobody knows <laughs> oh, that that I, was like an old, like, Billy Crystal or whatever routine, you know? <laughs> I have, a, I have a, a, a wrinkle for this. Would it change your mind if they say, listen, a lot of people are worried about missing out on a lot of stuff. Uh, or, or what if important things have to be decided or done while you're under? So what we'll do is we have two machines. Before we put you in this machine, we're going to uh, clone you. And so you, you'll be red team, blue team. You guys are the same person. You're just going to synchronize. You'll get, de you know, uh, every time one of you wakes up, the other one will spend six hours downloading what happened over the last week. And then, you, and then you'll take over. And as far as anyone else knows, you'll be a little foggy. One month on Mondays, as you get resynced with the rhythm of how all your projects are going, and then and then everything's back to biz. My here's here's my prediction on this one, Brian. Uh, a Brian wakes up one day. There's dishes in the dishwasher. Stuff needs to get fixed. Because B Brian left that, and he's like, ah, fine, fine, oh. I got this. And the end of the day, he's like, F. B. Brian, f <laughs> that guy. <laughs> and, you, and you know what? Like, I, I I got an apartment down the street. He's gonna wake up there and he's gonna have his own life and he can deal with this stuff. Because if I have to stick around here and fix it, then this is my place. B. Brian wakes up in this place and there's a note from A. Brian. Hey man, we had an agreement and <laughs> it looks like there was some sort of you know miscommunication. It's cool. It's cool. You've got your own place, your own stuff. I, I gave you the good, you know, video games. You know, that's that's a good question. Is there any way that it doesn't end up in resentment? <laughs> no, no. Look at how, like, you know, think of current self versus future self. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. You, know, you, you are constantly pushing things off to, to future self. Yeah, but that's not, look, I mean, that's <laughs> different. See, the, the real jerk is past self. He's always pushed yeah. stuff off to present me. Yeah, like Fair we point. said, future self and well, past I guess self. That, that, would, that would be the question is, could you maintain fellowship of, of mind like in, in your scenario, Brian, where like like because now it would become theology that you are one, something that you would have to believe in, despite the fact that physical evidence would say that you are two. Man, 
You yeah. can't find any clean underwear. You know, you're like, oh, thanks, B. Brian. Appreciate it. Great. I, I would like to believe that there's some magical amount of money I could have that all of that would get easier. <laughs> also, by the way, both of your versions call the other one B. Brian. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> what know? I was just thinking. <laughs> And you're like, oh man, I can't wait to go see Ready Player One. And then you and then kind of you, you have to show wake up, up like, this hazy memory of seeing it. But but dude, I had I had a ticket to see this. Yeah, but Ernie called. He got me a special <laughs> screening. Was I supposed to say no? <laughs> yeah. No matter money, we'll fix that. And it's like, well, maybe I'll go see it today, Brian. Brian, the whole reason we're doing this is that you are too busy to go watching yeah. movies twice. <laughs> You've already <laughs> seen it. It was great. I've given you the synopsis of how you feel about it. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then you you get a voicemail message, and it's Justin. It's like, man, I had a, that was a great conversation last night. You know, sometimes <laughs> I forget how valuable our friendship is. And he's like, oh wait, is this A Brian or B Brian voicemail? <laughs> oh man. And then A Justin and B Justin. You know, like ah, you know. Isn't A Justin cooler? No, I kind of like B Justin better. You know, you're right because huh. even if even if it's pretty much the same person at the beginning, that change is just going to exacerbate over time. No matter how much you intellectually are downloading that same information and keeping on the same page, you're you're having different nurture inputs, which is going to result in a different human being well, in twenty years. And, 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 yeah, and there, there's such a fascination, Andrew. I mean, you've you've uh, even you know, worked on ideas about like an entire like c cities of, of of clones, and I've always found that idea you know so fascinating to see like how the little like if we are all different because of our own variances of experiences and everything, right? Like in a world where everybody's literally the same person, how little do the variances have to be, and 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 at what point do they kind of fork off and you become? somebody we, different we ran this experiment in a form several billion years ago there's this single cell organisms like look at me i'm master yeah. of the earth you know it was like i'll just split look at me high five look at us we're masters of the we're the perfect form we're the perfect way to exist you know there's a little bit more ultraviolet radiation here you know, if we had a little bit thicker skin and some more chromatophores there, we could pick it up. Now we're perfect. Oh, oops, mutation. I'm a little bit different now. And now here we are arguing with ourselves. Yep. Yeah. Basically. So, yeah. Kind of, kind of. We saw how that turned out. There's a <laughs> House of a Thousand Suns. I'm not familiar uh, with that one. Is that a book? Book, book. And so the premise is that, like, somebody in the far future or maybe one of these, like, far past, whatever – you could like somebody can clone themselves over and over and over again and basically create their own sort of civilization of themselves and go out across the universe collecting data. You know, one of the things where, you know, you don't have like I don't think they have fast and light travel, so they have to travel, you know, subliminal speeds and stuff. But it's another uh yeah. Uh Abigail Gentian six million years ago at the dawn of the Star Faring era, Abigail Gentian fractured herself into a thousand male and female clones, which she called Shadowlings. But now someone is lin eliminating the Gentian line. Campion and personally, and two shadowlings who have fallen in love and share forbidden experience must determine exactly who or what their enemy is before they are wiped out of existence. So it's Alistair Reynolds, who's going to be a great writer. And this is House um, of Sons. Uh, just a House of Sons. Yeah, sorry. I was thinking confused with the Kevin Anderson book. Yeah, House of Sons. House of Sons. So. Right on. Yeah. You know, uh, we talk about this divisions, but really it's about coming together. And one of the ways we can come together is, well, you know. For us, for weird yeah. things. Yeah, you can give us money. Uh, we love it, man. <laughs> we just we rub it on our face and, and we just like thank uh, the money man every day. Uh, the money man is you, or at least it could be if you go over to patreon.com slash weird things. Uh, that's where you can kick us a little uh, little uh, little change out of your uh, out of your budge. And uh, and we're going to have a, a good time and keep doing this show. I'm sick. I don't want to be doing this show. I'm doing it. Why? Because money makes me. Money that comes out of your pocket. Head on over to patreon.com slash weird things right now. No, no, no. I don't 
only will you be keeping the show happening, but also you get your special RSS feed where you get almost twice as long a show. Instead of an hour and change, we also throw in the after things. And I would say in many respects, some of the most interesting sideways discussions we get into happen in the after things. Rather than having a late separate feed, you could get it all in one feed. Your three best friends plus me. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, I just I said three and I realized there was four of us and there was no going back and uh, at any rate uh, so, so Brian Brian pushed himself at the airlock that's right I was just like go ahead. I put that my hand the on the, on the airlock <laughs> uh, anyway uh, patreon.com slash weird things push himself out of the airlock but we're still in port. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm doing this. The rest of the, t- the rest of the cleaning staff is walking past. We're like, is he doing it again? He's doing it again. Yeah, he does this a every machine right launch. behind you, Brian. You know, <laughs> they put a ball pit out there because they know you're just going to keep doing it. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Brian's dead, guys. <laughs> Brian is dead. Brian died. Oh, no. Brian stepped out of the airlock, got incinerated, <laughs> right? And and there's no Brian left. Whatever can we do? How do we, how could we, you know, like, we could clone him, but oh, Brian's, all of his DNA got destroyed. Oh, man, that sucks, dude. Wait, wait, wait what are we, what are we going to do now? We, we have man. no Brian's. This sucks. This sucks. Oh, wait, Brian had progeny. And he that did. progeny had progeny. Yeah. What if? Keep, keep, keep me in ghost mode, Bryce. <laughs> what <clears throat> if? Guys. Guys. And he's in squish mode, too. My um, DNA lives. What? In- DNA lives? What if we got the DNA from all of his progeny? All his progeny and we're able also, to like. Also, check my wife because that's a real thing. Like, uh, 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 the partner's DNA, part of the, the oh, man, I saw, I heard, heard a radio lab on it that um, uh, the partner's DNA actually is in the blood system and the baby's DNA and all that stuff. It's crazy. But I'm a ghost. Anyhow, I don't know why we had this weird <laughs> pause because uh, I heard nothing. So, uh, what have we gathered, like, got DNA of all of his kids, maybe had his grandkids and all of them. We got yeah. their DNA, and we knew maybe there was a couple markers to look for of Brian. Could we Could we recreate Brian's original DNA? I strongly suggest you try. Mm, no. No, I don't think we I can. Mean, that, that would seem a little uh, – I mean, I guess if, if, if we're living in a, in a, a, a fantasy world where – we're creating dinosaurs out of, you know, uh, whatever we find out of amber and, and anything else. Like, we could probably put together, you know, a, a, a Jurassic Park version of Brian, right? Sure, sure. So, I think. Wait a minute. Why? Here's an interesting question. Technologically speaking, uh, so, so you're in committee, right? Uh, 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 the Appropriations Committee for All the Money in the World. We've got two options. Yes, the entire planet. We want to recreate Brian. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but we are all agreed on that. But there's two proposals. One proposal is the DNA project, where we grab DNA from all of his ch- children, and, and, and uh, we, we look for hairbrushes and everything, and we, we try to recreate them uh, genealogically. Uh, but the simulation faction says, why bother to do that as long as we create something that that speaks indistinguishably from Brian, looks in, in, in the same as Brian? Like, who cares whether it shares even one iota of his DNA? Um, like, basically a Turing test faction. The, the scientist faction, like, well, Brian may have had some immunities. Brian may have actually had some things that we don't know. There's the missing data. Although, yes, it may satisfy... You know the the ever dwindling fan base of Brian um, to to recreate him. <laughs> Release for that. the greatest hits DVD. I'm just saying, keep the brand. Yeah, it may alive. satisfy them. Uh, there are some people who say like, yeah, but we want to know the real Brian because there are things about him, their behavior mechanisms, things like things. You know, we found we found that secret room in his house, <laughs> and we don't know what Brian did in there. We have no idea what he did in there. Oh, that's right. The bleached. simulation wouldn't know, wouldn't be able to tell you either. Yeah, you would only uh, be able so, to give a satisfying answer. What's that? I was—I I realized simulation theory wouldn't be that version yeah. wouldn't be able to answer it. 
It could only tell you. I mean, yeah, again, it's hard to know. There could be this thing that, like, if you have a gap here and a gap there, it could mean this. You could do lots of, like, Bayesian sort of guess what could fit here kind of things. But if we look at this DNA, we're like, oh, no, like, Brian had uh, 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 Cosby Shilophilia. Well, what's that? Oh, like he loved Jello. He loved <laughs> Jello. It's just a, it's a gene thing. It's a weird genetic thing. He was just obsessed oh, with Jello. <laughs> but you, we never knew that. We didn't know what he went in there and did there. You know, he actually paid all cash for it. Went into the room. They named it a long like, time ago, guys. That, <laughs> the DSM was the there's no way that the, just was off the on, top of his head. All the ways what? that that uh, that one on the wheel of punchlines could have landed. <laughs> I guys, I swear to you, that was. My pause there was trying to figure out some strange thing, and it was <laughs> it was an in the moment. You thing. nailed it. Let me take a moment to stand in right. belly um, clap um, for that. <laughs> that was pretty good. So I wanted to say Jello something. I'm like, oh, well, Cosby, and then it was the, uh, then how that then I was then I go to merchandise. No, and then it was like he sells it, he shills it, and then <laughs> philia, Cosby shillophilia. Okay, got it, got it. So. Even having seen behind the curtain, being, that was still a worthy endeavor. Yeah, I will own up to prepared material, and and that was in the moment. <laughs> um, so anyhow, Brian goes in his room, plays with his jello, because um, I was not about to do an impersonation of Bill Cosby. Uh, apparently, he's under some sort of controversy. Anyhow, um, yeah. point is, hello, you, got nice look into me, the... Bill Cosby. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, you, you, Bill Cosby. That's oh, not a pudding yeah, pot, you know. Uh, Oh, you Rudy! <laughs> That's not pudding so, uh, pop. This uh, is a pudding pop. Scientists apparently have been able to reconstruct the DNA of a slave born in a Dutch colony in the Caribbean who escaped to Iceland even though he died 200 years ago and his body had been lost. Wait a minute. So, Wait, they from what? reconstructed the DNA of a 200-year-old man without actually having his body. And and is this from the various uh, bits and pieces? From I, I mean, but how many kids do you have to have? Because you only contribute half the DNA to each of your children, and uh, let's say let's say what the first child you got fifty percent, then seventy five percent, then eighty two and a half, and you and within what uh, you'd have to have like a hundred kids. Um. Yeah. I mean, they didn't. They don't. They didn't get like a hundred percent of the DNA, but okay. they got a high percentage of the DNA. They say they got like thirty eight percent of the maternal DNA. So. The matrilineals. They say they got 38 percent. They were able to reconstruct a significant chunk of that. And so it was a very interesting experiment was to say, hey, now. I don't know how much they. Uh, you know, the guess the real test is going to be like they actually need to have somebody to test it against. It seems um, like it would be valuable, even more valuable to have the DNA of both the mother and father. It seems like if you had the mother and father, then you have all the source DNA. There's nothing in you that's not your mother and father unless there was a mutation of some sort. Then uh, from the kids, there's nothing – everything the kids had, you had to have. So uh, between those two, it seems like you could very quickly whittle things down. Yeah, you could get a much – you could figure out large parts of it, large parts of what this person was. You know, if you have a kid, one kid, you know, you can figure out like 50 percent of the you – know, well, if you have one kid, you don't know which 50 percent necessarily because a lot of it just is overlap, whatever. But if you can oh, figure out differences. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So-called so -called junk DNA. Or, or I mean, just, the, you know, we inherit the same things from your mom and your, you know, your dad. Yeah. But – uh, same ways to do stuff, but yeah, but you could look for if you knew was what, what wasn't present in your mom's DNA, you could sort of isolate there. But you know, it's an interesting thing we're able to reconstruct a good, significant at least part of somebody's genome just through looking at their ancestors. That's awesome. Yeah. So, Brian, there's hope. It won't quite <laughs> fully be you. <laughs> well, oh, the, the memory of me thanks you. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyhow, um, so what time is it? It's Journey Quest time! Journey Quest time? Yeah! It is Journey Quest time. Hold on, we have a... We Journey have... Quest! I can't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> Journey Quest! Previously on... Journey Quest! Steven didn't make one this week, but the guys uh, went to a jerky store, and they the guy gave him a lot of jerky, and it was creepy, and... I don't remember how it ended. It, well, he was going to show them something? Yeah. He's about remember. as helpful as these recaps usually are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steven, so much. So. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Previously on Journey Quest, Brian and Justin found the world's largest jerky emporium in Texas. And they were made an offer if they would smuggle an atomic bomb into Bryce Vegas and kill Bryce. How funny would it be if, like, Game of Thrones did that one week? Just randomly. (laughs) Just like previously on Game of Thrones. We didn't make one, but uh, Cersei's mean and she's going to kill somebody. And she found out about something that... Jamie was doing, and uh, I fell asleep yeah, in the middle of it. I, I think it was a dragon. I think, like, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Here's the show. <laughs> By the way, I'm the president of HBO. <laughs> oh. Yeah, me. Uh, I fired and, the guy that does these, and and then, then they're like, "Why don't you do it?" I'm like, "I'll do it." I'm gonna go call him. <laughs> it's me, Herbert B. Office, the founder and creator of HBO. <laughs> Herbert B. Office. <laughs> I remember, like, it was, like, second season Game of Thrones that I always fast-forwarded through those, and I'm like, no, those aren't just, like, random assortments of clips from a previous episode, you know? I'm like, I know what happened in previous seasons. What, what yeah. am I, an idiot? And I'm like, who is this guy? Who's I'm like, oh, they're doing, like, hey, remember this? Yeah, no. Wink, wink. Remember this? Wink, wink. <laughs> Yeah, or you know, just basically, and and to be honest, I think that's the same value. That's part of the reason I always go see movies at the Alamo Draft House is because they're curated collection before and less so now. Nowadays, it's a lot of viral clips, but it used to be that they would specifically pull stuff out, seemingly just because it was generally related to the theme. When in in reality, like I got a much better experience watching Batman Begins because I was not familiar with the Scarecrow, but uh, but instead I got a twenty minute primer on the Scarecrow just you know through random Batman clips. Yeah. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, you've been in the you're in the jerky emporium. You've been asked to smuggle an atomic bomb into Bryce Vegas, where you're about to go have your big, huge wrestling. You're now pro wrestlers, post apocalyptic pro wrestlers. Uh, yeah. You've murdered a number town, one post apocalyptic premier number wrestlers. Number one. Uh, also, uh, apparently, it's not really pro wrestling because we definitely like murdered people <laughs> in our first bout. So. Hey man, are, are you saying yeah. wrestling's fake? Because wrestling ain't fake. Does this look fake to you? We straight up murdered them. Yeah, it's true. This is point in your favor. Uh, so anyhow, uh, your uh, your host has now gone to open up the vault door to show you a prize. Uh, man, all right, so I take this quick moment to to lean over to Justin. I was like, hey, he's like, man. prize. This is what I, this is what I'm gonna give you if you if you do the thing in the bomb. Uh, okay, all right. Well, uh, I look over to Justin. I was like, look, d- d- does it matter how good this thing is? Are we really gonna consider committing genocide and killing our old friend Bryce, even though he's a little touched right now? He's power mad and crazy, but could it possibly be? I mean, how good could the award be that 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 we do this? Let's also remember that he is almost certainly making jerky out of human beings. Like he's 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 let that Wait, slip no, deliberately. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Why, the smell of an entire small town that got caught on fire and all the burning human flesh is wafting through my air conditioning system. All right, I'm sorry. You go back to passing judgment on me, please. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, the obvious, I don't think our moral compasses are necessarily pointing to the same true north. <laughs> okay. Well, let's put a pin in this, and let's just see what the prize is. Maybe it makes it to where we don't have to really think hard about it. Wait a minute. Hold on. So our, our, our firm moral declaration is... Probably not, but let's see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. Should I commit murder? Should I commit genocide? Probably <laughs> not. Dot dot dot. But let's see. This guy gets it, gentlemen. Um, I'm going to show you what's behind the vault. Ernie, stop peeking! I told you not to peek. Oh, sorry. It's just... <laughs> you walk inside the vault. It's a corridor. Just come on, follow me. Walk down the corridor. There's another door. It's like, hold on, I got a key. But it's like a little rinky-dink key. It's like, I have the vault. It's overkill at this point. I know. It's just the door already had a lock on it. I take it off, but it looked like it was like a dorm room thing, and I was lazy. And I really should put like a more secure thing, like one of those, like, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> it's hard to get things in the apocalypse. You know, like an eyeball scanner, that'd be great. I thought about putting right, like a fake one. All right, let's move it along. You are totally not getting to another next week but before you show us what this prize is. All right. Anyhow, I don't know what you're talking about. Let me just unlock the door here. And it's it's like it's the door it makes that hollow sound, like the door is like just door skin and air. You know, it's like I yeah. know you could kick this in like easy. Opens up the door and it squeaks. I can't even believe it squeaks. You know, I don't let Ernie in here, but 
He is good at the WD-40. Anyhow. I, I begin to you wave my <laughs> chainsaw hand in a let's speed it up, Buster, gesture. <laughs> all right, all right. Have a seat. There's leather couches, and there's a big screen. Big screen in front. Big screen. Like, it's a black, but just dramatic black. Big screen. Can't tell if you're in a room. Big cavernous where just There's a screen. There's couches, leather couches, like leather seats. I have a seat, gentlemen. Have a seat. All right. I do so. I want to show you, I want to show you something. Pulls out a remote control. Presses the button. Boop. Nothing happens. He's like, "Oh man, wrong remote. Hold on, let me let me dig through here. Let me find another remote here." Boop. Ah, nope. Hold on. Hold I, on. I, I, I pipe up saying, I, 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 "Do you want to just call Ernie in? I bet Ernie, you know, he probably. Uh, no, you know, no, we used to have a guy things. who was Not better than us at all this I, stuff. I, 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 I queue up and start playing uh, the uh, uh, wrap it up music from the Oscars from <laughs> my, uh, my 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 right, Hold on. This is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Trust me on this one. Doot, doot, doot. I tried. You know, I had my nephew reprogram these for me, and it was great. So it's busy. Told me to get the Apple TV and make it easier. You know, they have Amazon. Now they got Amazon. I I, I try. So I pick up some Amazon. of the. I pick up some of the other remotes and just start hitting the power button, hoping to help. TV pops on. I was like, oh, what'd you do? Uh, I was like, um, I, I got lucky. Don't worry. Just uh, let's take a look. It says dun, 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 dun. a presentation for you. What's <laughs> you guys? Do you guys? It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gentlemen, you, the voice says, gentlemen, Brian and Justin, you have been tasked by the syndicate for a very special assignment. I, uh, I elbow Justin and, and nod approvingly uh, because uh, I, I whisper, our reputation precedes us. Mm -hmm. I'm right. Oh, yeah. Warlord Bryce, as you know, is a menace. And he started to see flashback scenes from things that he's done, like murdering entire towns, you know, uh, chopping off, you know, like rocketing off limbs of Brian and all sorts of horrible things have happened, all because of the evil Bryce. Evil Bryce. I, right? I elbow Justin. I'm like, that was my hand. That was my yeah. hand that made the highlight real. So wait, hold on, wait. So so does it actually show what happened where Brian re reached out to grab a rocket screaming by him? I mean, it's, well, it's, a, it's an actor right? playing the part of Brian. Just bumping a missile. <laughs> I just it's an actor playing the part of Brian. <laughs> okay. So like, I got it, this it, rocket. A... No! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So so it does. I assume it does a very Justin's good job. Like, hey man, you don't need to do that. <laughs> like, oh, geez. Yeah, we haven't nailed down the ethnicity on Justin yet. Uh, so I, I assume it does a very compelling job of convincing us that Bryce is a menace that must must be oh, destroyed. Oh, yeah. Stomping on children, just horrible, horrible, horrible thing. Right. Uh, so anyhow, Bryce is a menace that needs to be stopped. That's why we've selected you two for the mission. Deliver an atomic bomb to Bryce. Vegas. Okay. Um, and what do we get out of this? I'm glad you asked what do you get out of this, and I'm glad that I waited the approximate time sitting here in the recording booth three weeks ago when I made this. Dude, we got Nora. Because right now, we're going to cut to a live shot. All of a sudden, you see live camera footage, and you're looking at a neighborhood, right? It's a nice neighborhood. It kind of looks like a certain neighborhood in Austin, Texas. Oh, my gosh. Justin, I think I recognize this neighborhood. You pan up. It's a little different, though. A little bit different. There's a big house. Brian, you may recognize this as a replica of your house. Uh, that is an exact replica of my house. Across the street. Justin, do you remember this house? No, of course you didn't. You never lived in this house, but you can live in this house. <laughs> this big, beautiful three-story house could be your house. Let's go up inside. The house door opens. Do, 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 do. Go upstairs. Do, 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 do. Up to the third floor. Do, do, do. Door opens. There's a podcast studio. A beautiful, amazing automated podcast studio like this. We go out the hallway. We go look through a window and we see across the street Brian's house. And we can see that there's another podcast studio. Like a sign that says podcast studio inside here. Don't enter. Okay, go back down. Walk outside. This utopian community, Diamond Club Acres, is under a geodesic dome, and it's protected from the harsh, harsh radiation of the post apocalyptic world. It has everything. What's this? A barbecue restaurant. Oh, what's this right down here? 
a bar stocked <laughs> with every kind of beer and ale that you could possibly imagine. What are these other homes here? Oh, these are for all your favorite fans from Diamond Club. That are alive. Because we, we well, apparently keep killing them. But you're like, oh, but the ones that are alive. Gentlemen, let's go back inside to Brian's door. We open up the door, and there's Bonnie and the kids waving. Hi, Daddy. Let's go run across the street to Justin's house. Open up the door. Who do we see? Ashley waiting for them. We go next door. Brett and his brood are there. Hey, guys. And we go over to the house over there, and there's Andrew going, Hi, guys. How you doing? Right? All right. And then, uh uh-oh. What's this? We hear, we feel, I just, the camera just got tapped on the shoulder. She's going to do a slow reveal. Good, Bryce. (laughs) I'm wearing a name tag. Uh, This is good, Bryce. (laughs) I'm I'm good, Bryce. (sighs) Not bad, Bryce. I'm the good Bryce you remember. I, uh, I look over to Justin and establish eye contact and give just the slightest of subtle winks. And I say, well, I wasn't convinced until now. I think this is too good to pass up. And give us uh, the atomic bomb my, is my vote. Yep. We were very skeptical to the point where we were loudly talking about how this was definitely not going to pay off. But now <laughs> we've 120% uh, 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 turned 180 degrees on this one. Give us the bomb. Then the camera. You see the cameras aimed at Bryce, and Bryce is like, "I'm so sorry." We see a gun come to good Bryce's. (laughs) Oh no! (laughs) He just falls dead on the ground. Are you like, oh, Justin? Don't you realize this is an actual ethical conundrum? (laughs) Because if we don't go get. If, if we don't do what they say, they're going to kill all the people there. This isn't just paradise. No, they're holding no, a the hostage. Cancel, no, 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 no. We, we we saw you're apprehensive about Bryce. Now, granted, all the, your friends, they're either clones or robots or robot clones. I figured We figured you'd know that. But no, we we, we didn't think you liked him. Oh, you killed no, we, me. Okay. I, 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 say, I say, all right, well, now you're in trouble. Uh, we'll only kill Bryce Bad Bryce, if you promise to bring back good Bryce. <laughs> yeah, no. You hear the sounds of Makita drills. Okay. You know, and then good Bryce. Hey, guys. <laughs> ah, and, Everything's okay and... here. Everything's okay. <laughs> There's only one thing that we absolutely need for us to go in and, and, and explode Bryce Vegas. And this, on this... We are non-negotiable. This is either A or B, because as tantalizing as all this is, we, we, we need to have this one condition met. The syndicate can make these things happen. We need good Bryce on our team to bring the, to bring the weapon to Bryce Vegas. It's the only way. It's the only, the way. only way. Gentlemen. Voiceover says, "This is actually not a voiceover, by the way. I'm doing this live. If you haven't figured that out, when I, when I told him to kill." <laughs> Gentlemen, remember how you entered this deep, dark, mysterious room? Go do it, Jerky King. All right, guys. And by the way, we think he's kind of weird too. He's just a thing. What's that? Nothing, Jerky King. <laughs> um. Anyhow, press the button. All right, pressing the button. Presses the button. The screen lifts up, lights come up. Next thing you know, you're in Diamond Town, Diamond Club Acres. Oh my God! The dome. The lights come up. Bum, 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 I, like I Truman s- Show. I but by the way, no, you'll have the real sun. Don't worry. But we can do this thing. We can do it at night, or we can make it like day. Just a thing. I I sell the bit and I scream like I just found out that I got a car from Oprah and uh, yeah. and I did I giddily go running around and and try to do a cartwheel, but discovered that it helps to have two hands to do a cartwheel. Yeah, and you're, you're, a your chainsaw gets stuck in a sewer grating, and you're sort of <laughs> stuck in, like, a handstand thing. Uh, and then having a realization, uh, I shout out, uh, oh, also, you can bring back my dong, right? Arf, 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 arf. A dog comes running up to you. <laughs> it's not your dog, but it, it likes you just the same. <laughs> I say close enough. <laughs> yeah. But it's sneakers. <laughs> I know. I was going to say, yeah, it's sneakers, and Brian's like, eh, it's fine. <laughs> 
Uh, man, I guess, uh, I guess, Justin, we got to go collect good Bryce and uh, on the way, not only deliver this atomic bomb, but figure out whether or not we really plan to go through with this. This is a real devil's bargain we've been given. No, Brian, we're absolutely going to do it. Uh, no more hesitations. They've given us everything we've uh, ever wanted, including a home. We don't even have to go to California anymore. In fact, we can now just use this as a front uh, uh, to go blow up Bryce Vegas. Uh, reset this uh, this new emerging world on uh, a proper trajectory and, and then come back to live the rest of our days here in Diamond Club Acres. Which is great because if you double cross us, we are going to use cruise missiles to blow up your loved ones if we know where they are. Yeah. It's a little uh, technical detail. The lawyers asked me to put that in there. Exactly. So what? So you're, you're going to send cruise missiles to... Los Angeles, uh, Fresno. I mean, just just help us to, because because you know we know where our yeah. loved ones are. We just want to see if you really yeah. know where they are. <laughs> uh, listen, gentlemen, you're not going to trick me, because these would be GPS coordinates that are in a slip of paper in Good Bryce's pocket, <laughs> not actual street addresses, because that wouldn't make any sense. Because oh, that okay. data is useless. Okay, well, well, if you just hand us that atomic bomb, I guess, uh, and our good Bryce, I guess we'll just be off on a, a quick little jaunt up the road to go assassinate a town. Good yeah. news, your good Bryce has been, actually, the one we shot didn't make it. We tried to fix him. It just didn't, didn't, didn't quite. <laughs> did. He, he, he was, he's a robo model. It's a robot thing. It's fine. You know, we took him into the store. We tried to get it repaired. They're like, you know what? We're just going to give you a new one. We're going to give you a new one. All right, and this good. is actually top better. the line Android. Uh, this is, this better, is what, we, what we need. Better. Lifelike, incredibly amazing. Um, uh, don't hurt this one because he is kind of fragile. Just so you know. All right. So way more one. feature. It's better. It's a better version, to be honest with you. It's better. We call it the Bryce X. And it's got all these amazing features, but he is more fragile than the last Bryce, the Bryce 8. The Bryce 9, we didn't even bother with that one. Got it. All right. Well, let's collect him. Uh, give us a vehicle. Give us a truck. We're, we're out of here. All right. Well, Brian, uh, why don't you just look inside your garage? Oh, I opened the garage. I was like, oh, you got me again. Give my best to the jerky king. Parked sideways in a weird way in the garage <laughs> is the truck from Back to the Future. <laughs> Remember right. how it was parked sideways? You're like, like. <laughs> yeah. It's really good for camera, but it's really a weird parking job. It's <laughs> just not on the parking game. That's you know? a good point. Mm. All right, I assume I assume there's a uh, nuke loaded in the back. Yeah, there's a nuke. It's like it's like. All right, it's a nuke. Uh, listen, Justin. Uh, uh, there's not enough room for you in your mech suit, so you could either get out of the mech suit and load it in the back. Uh, I guess we could bungee cord it on top well, of no, the. We got to get back to. We have a whole entourage waiting for us at the jerky place. Honk honk! You turn around. There's the RV and everything. Hey guys, we're right here. Okay, Does all that, right. Uh, need us some help loading the cargo? Yeah, uh, I say goodbye. Good Bryce, you drive the nuke. Uh, I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> Let me know when we get to uh, to Bryce Vegas. I like that that's your reunion with good Bryce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go, yeah, yeah. go take a nap. Start your edge. <laughs> I mean, it does color things knowing that this is a recently manufactured perfect Android clone of good Bryce. I think my first response would be, what the hell is Bryce Vegas? <laughs> oh, yeah. We were like, oh, yeah, listen, we're going to have some <laughs> existential conversations on the way out there. We're going to talk Actually, about the nature. Here, here's, all right, here's the deal. I'm going to get out of my mech suit, uh, uh, load that in the uh, RV, whatever uh, part of that. The, the three pod. of us are going to be in the car loaded with the new. Okay. That sounds like a good deal. Sounds fair enough. Um, hey, you guys want your beef jerky? <laughs> no, weirdo. And then I tell uh, new Bryce to peel out. <laughs> I, I stick my head out the window. I'm like, it was really good. It was really, really good. All right, they're not going to let me stick around here, though. The, apparently, uh, it's a private plan community. <laughs> Something about not wanting presumed cannibals. <laughs> I, I just out, like, in the distance, I'm, I'm like, leave the jerky then. Just leave the jerky. Yeah. And you, you see cop cars pull up and, like, arrest the jerky king, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just in the rear view mirror. Um, but... But uh, you told me <laughs> it was okay. I didn't know this, uh, this syndicate sucks. 
Uh, and meanwhile, uh, 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 Matt Cabani is writing a strongly worded uh, next door uh, <laughs> post about, did anybody else see the weird jerky man? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Brett, we're road tripping. Mecca- Mecca Brett standing in the street watching you guys holding a baby in his arm, looking at you, going, hmm, and, uh, choices. Is... <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, we're, 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 we're off, uh, uh, and, and, and I assume we've cleared the, the border of Diamond. Yeah. Door yeah. opens up, you drive out of the dome, and you're like, man, it's beautiful in here, but out here, yeah, this, we do live in apocalyptic wasteland. The rest of the world is a dump. All right. Uh, I, I, sorry, are we? Uh, I feel like we're running out oh, of time. Oh, oh, sorry. You just had to drive over a five hundred pound cockroach. Go ahead. <laughs> five hundred <laughs> pound. Holy cow. Uh, okay. Look, Justin. What are we doing? Are we gonna? Yeah. Are we gonna actually blow up this town? <laughs> a gnat hit the windshield, and it was a big ass gnat. I mean, it was like uh, founder. Hail to the no! I didn't think we're so. gonna drive this thing right into the middle of town. We're going to have old uh, Robo McSide haircut walk it right into the center of town. And uh, 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 and then we're going to, I don't know, shoot him or something, and they'll find the bomb. And we'll just say that it was some weird syndicate plan. We don't have to have anything to do with it. <laughs> okay, but, but Bryce is like four feet away from you right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. First, uh, first of all, hey, uh, real quick, your programming. What's your what's your self preservation instinct? Uh, do you I care mean, about staying alive? I I don't want to die. Okay. It's my Sorry. please don't die initiative. Hey, uh, uh, <laughs> none of us do. Join the club. But you do recognize that your life is of lesser value than our lives. What do you think you're going to get out of this conversation? I mean, it's the only logical conclusion, right, Robot Man? Yeah, right. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead I'm and run that numbers problem. real quick. And let us know when you come up with the fact that uh, you're less valuable than us. <laughs> Are you saying I'm a robot? Oh, <laughs> uh... You're robot-like in many ways. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Am I not speaking your language? Beep, bop, boop, boop, (laughs) bop, boop. (laughs) Yeah, we're saying you're a robot, kiddo. Welcome to the big leagues. Oh, jeez. Hey, also, you ready for a real mind bender? Uh, Actual you, deranged and evil. No, that that one one tracks. (laughs) (laughs) So do Uh, do you have a problem? Here's what you're going to do. You're gonna and go. I like that you're uh, berating him as he's driving you <laughs> and a oh, nuclear yeah, yeah. bomb. All right, well, here, like, how about this? You're worthless. You're nothing to us. <laughs> no, well, it's well, like, oh, Jesus. Hold on, dude. You're going you have... across a narrow bridge over a ravine right now. <laughs> do, do you have a problem with the idea of killing your your actual human flesh progenitor? I don't like killing anything. Yeah, but. <laughs> But, All right, how about this? How about this? I'm gonna uh, we're, we're gonna. Uh, I hate to hate to do a, a story and a story here, but like uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you uh, your own little moral conundrum. You can rattle this one around your little metal conscience. Uh, you are a robot simulation of a maniac lunatic who has tried to kill us multiple times and has almost certainly killed dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of others. So how about this? We are going to be your cover to get in. To the center of the real use power, you will have the detonation key for a nuclear warhead that you are allowed to either press or you can walk out and surrender yourself. You can do whatever you want as soon as we leave. Hey, wait a minute, Justin. Justin, <laughs> why, why are leaving me to die? On. I know we're supposed to just nuke uh, Bryce Vegas, but but it's pretty clear that they just want Bryce out of the picture, right? What if we what if we assassinated? Uh, Mecha Evil Bryce, and then we pulled a Dave, and we had Robot Bryce pretend oh, to wait. be. Oh wait, you want to pull a Dave? Yeah, yeah. A uh, little Moon over Parador action. Oh my God! Wait a minute. Now, Brian, <laughs> you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. <laughs> so then, and you want to then... Dave this ever ever? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We install. He becomes our 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 puppet uh, president, or maybe even actual president. I don't know. It depends on how evil these tendencies are. Okay. <laughs> but at the very least, we get rid of deranged evil uh, uh, biological Bryce and put in smart. Um, Pliable, uh, <laughs> pliable, morally flexible. I am right. I'm looking directly at you. Yes, Brian. but we both know we can talk you into doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so instead of trying to rehabilitate the real me, or negotiate, or or just leave me be, 
you're going to kill the real me. Uh, uh, these, put... these are all really good ideas. I'm glad we're workshopping. <laughs> See, this is, it sounds like you're on board. He's pretty much on board, Justin. We just we got time to figure out how to implement, uh, implement Look, this. Hey, how would you like to never be called Robo You again? Yeah. Because the only surefire way that you can be Robo You is if the other uh, 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 flesh and baloney you uh, uh, is out of this whole picture. So... Like I, I think we 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 need to start seeing the same world right in front of us, man. I mean, the math of that checks out. If if I'm sticking around in Diamond Club Acres, I'm only gonna get Robo Bryce. Yeah, pretty much day in day yeah. out. Yeah. So you feel all right? We got a plan. It's uh, 106 miles to Bryce Vegas. We got a nuke in the back. We have a robot facsimile of a current leader. It's bright, and there's 500-pound cockroaches. Hit it. Here we go. Uh, uh, also, I grab a uh, magic marker and scrawl a very thin mustache on Robo Bryce's face so we can play him off as Gustav. Our, uh, our 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 press man. Yeah. Also, also, it'll be make sure it's. I, I I remind you, make sure it's permanent markers so that in the event of a, of a standoff, we know which one we want to shoot. All right. So yeah, that's your cover. Your Gustav. Uh, 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 any press has to go through you, and uh, just uh, follow up with us. Just uh, stay close, basically, because you never know when we're gonna wind up killing. The head of this town, <laughs> so we can install you as their new unquestioned leader. Sure, okay. yeah. Also, FYI, I don't know if you if, if you got like a LTE in that the Chrome <laughs> Dome of yours, but uh, just go ahead and and start studying up on strongmen because you're almost certainly gonna have other members of your military wing immediately start trying to kill you if they send something's off. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll see. I think I think I might only have Bluetooth three point oh, but uh, he has to pull out a phone. He pulls out a phone. To do this. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, guys. All right, Just go right. ahead and uh, yeah, read up on that on Wikipedia. Also, you're still driving, so that's fine. <laughs> oh, boom! We just hit another cockroach. Yeah. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> hey, look! You look out the window and you see they're dismantling the Jerky King's billboards. <laughs> <laughs> like life Good. comes. That guy was a fast. weirdo. Yeah, almost certainly a killer. Anyway, yeah. we're going to go murder somebody. Let's do it, team, on yeah. three. Yeah. As right. you're eating a big chunk of beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Credits roll. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. There's another billboard. It's got a lot of bright lights spinning around it, neon, everything. And the billboard says, welcome to Bryce Vegas. Next time on Journey Quest. <laughs> Viva Bras Vegas. <laughs> Journey uh, you, you changed the game with that Dave plan. That Dave yeah. plan was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I was, I mean, I, I'm, I'm proud of that one. That came in last second. Good turn. Good turn. Uh, uh, hey, yeah, I got, uh, well, I, I got a pick, but do you guys have something you're fired up over? Well, then I'll go you first. Go, you go first. Yeah, uh, yeah I, no, I want to plug my friend's book. Here is Real Magic by Nate Stanner Fourth. It's super good, and it made me cry, and it got released this past week. Um, uh, as we've talked about on the show, and um, uh, initial sales information matters, initial enthusiasm matters. Right now, if you are a fan of the book, if you're already enjoying it, or if you just got it, you're halfway through it, uh, or you just have an opinion about books that you have not yet read, uh, put a review. Reviews matter. The more reviews, the better. Um, at some point, I think, uh, Andrew, for some reason, I have the idea that like getting over 100 reviews is a significant milestone in Amazon. Is that a thing? There are triggers where the more – if you get review momentum and people buying the book and reviewing it, that's the thing that carries to they, – they weigh it differently, but – it certainly, certainly helps a lot. Um, it, it's certain review because what will happen is if if you buy Nate's book and you bought, let's say, my book, lots of people who bought my book or let's say one of Brian's books are going to get an email saying, hey, you might also like this because people who buy this. So reviews help. Buying books really help. Um, so uh, that's the thing to think about, too, is that the Kindle version is 10 bucks. That counts sort of the same if you want to do that. Um, it does make a big difference. But reviews, if you can do reviews, reviews carry momentum. That's really good. It helps increase sort of where things are going. Um, so, 
Yeah, dude. Yes. Uh, so uh, the book is called Here Is Real Magic. It's uh, it's pretty great because we all have that moment uh, in a project where we love the thing and then you get jaded about it. And uh, what a curious situation if you're a magician, somebody whose job is to create wonder and you sort of lose the mojo to the wonder in your own life. And it seems rote and mechanical and you don't see the point of it. Uh, Nate went on a real life, very exciting adventure to sort of discover, uh, discover uh, I, I don't know. Rekindle uh, his his mojo. It's uh, it's it's delightful and wonderful. He has a a passion and sincerity that I absolutely love. I think you'll dig the book, but most importantly, you should review the book. Yep. Buy the book uh, and review the book. Yes. Number one in Magic and Illusion right now. So yeah, there you yeah. Go. dude. Did I do Jumanji last week? I, I I know we talked about it on Night Attack. I don't think we talked about it here. No, you did. Well, uh, I didn't remember, okay, week. so his is number. It's number two in Magic Tricks. Number one is Cat Butts, a coloring book, which I do not think is actually a magic book. <laughs> Maybe you what? haven't looked at enough cat butts. <laughs> Pretty sure it's not a magic book. Yeah, it's magical. All right, sorry, Justin. You were saying <laughs> Jumanji. Welcome to the jungle. Uh. I loved it. I thought it was really, really good. Yeah. There was a conversation that I had with um, Cargill uh, uh, last time I was in Austin. I did their uh, junk food cinema podcast, which is great and everybody should listen to. But uh, we had this conversation about how we are in this like a uh, uh, world where a lot of the the stuff that they review, the '80s stuff that are as is, is viewed as you know like junk food, like the, the title of the show is something that is kind of increasingly in vogue. The idea of just unironic, good guy, good times, fun, like earnestness is kind of uh, uh, in vogue. And and the first time that I kind of saw that in a big budget movie like this is, is Jumanji, which I think is probably most notable for the fact that in a reboot of a classic with the kind of talent that you would normally find in a subversive kind of uh, a, a reboot like you know Jack Black and Kevin Hart you have basically just a lot of coming of age good earnest fun times like and there's the characters are in real danger and they get you know uh, things things happen but it's not the uh, uh, you know it's not snide and it's not a uh, uh, kind of a, a, a dark it's just big Almost in the way that, you know, like uh, films in the 80s were just big, colorful, straight ahead fun. And I, I really loved it. That's awesome. I can't wait to see it. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I have, of course, see Paddington 2. Oh, yeah. I finally watched uh, Paddington 1, and uh, it was adorable Isn't and charming it? and wonderful, and, and I I laughed. Uh, it was it was great. Uh, it, it didn't have to do that meta this is secretly a dirty joke for the parents thing. It's like no. just by being adorable and Wes Anderson-y and everything, I just, I, I loved it. Yeah. Uh, your pick, Brian? Do you want to stick with your original magic? That's your... Oh, yeah, pick? yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, my pick is, uh, I'm going to pick Twins. You know, I watched that last night. You know, listen to the Arnold Schwarzenegger audiobook, and he talks about working on different movies. What was interesting about Twins is prior to Twins, Arnold's the only comedy he'd really done was, you know, Hercules Ghost in New York, which is available on Hulu right now, by the way, with Arnold's original voice as Arnold Strong. Um, <laughs> wow. That's all I'll say about that. But Twins was Arnold had been looking to do what he liked the idea of doing comedy. He'd been hanging out in Milton Berle and these Friars Club comedians and stuff. And they said, you know, Arnold should try comedy. And so he was hanging out with Ivan Reitman. It was kind of Arnold's telling jokes and stuff and was kind of waiting for Ivan Reitman to say, you know, Arnold, you should do comedy. And because there's in his Reitman says, you know, there's this kind of innocent quality that you can do that would, you know, could work. And. You know, they thought about the idea of that working with Ivan Reitman and Danny DeVito and the three of them together. And the problem was the three of them were box office stars at this point. You know, Reitman is a huge director. This guy, Ghostbusters, done so many hilarious comedic comedies. Arnold is Arnold, you know, heading towards the highest point of his career as far as what his box office was. Danny DeVito was both a writer, you know, producer, writer, and star, could do whatever he wants. So they knew there was no way a studio could afford to pay you know, whatever their asking price was. So they went to the studio and said, hey, listen, we're going to do the movie for free. 
we just want a percentage. We want a percentage of the box office. Oh, wow. Um, and like a real percentage, not a net, not one of these, you know, kind of uh, the yeah. real percentage. We want it each one a percentage in the box office. So that was the deal they made with the studio. And let me show you uh, how did that turn out? Um, let me pull up the box office. Oh, no. And uh, the movie grossed, um, did 100 million domestic, did another 100 million foreign. This was a movie made in 1988 for 15 million dollars. Wow. wow! Arnold said that he's made so far like 35 million dollars off of the movie. Wow. Okay. Uh, and there is rumor they're they're talking. He's trying to get made another a sequel called Triplets with Eddie Murphy. Oh, wild! Yeah, that would be kind of cool. But anyhow, um, point is the thing is the takeaway from that was hey no they don't have the budget to afford this. Okay, what's well, an alternative? All right, where's the risk? They don't want the new the studio didn't want to put, you know, pay ten million dollars for each actor up front and have to spend thirty million. Like, no, fifteen million budget, we get a percentage, so you get, you know, your your bottom line is this, and if the movie makes money, obviously we get a big chunk of that, but you know, it's sort of a win win. Now the studio like they said after fat afterwards the studio says, uh, it was universal, like if we were gonna do this again, we just would have paid your fees. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. You know that that the thirty five million he got, they could have had paid him just ten million. So, anyhow, that was my uh, pick. That, that's that's the risk, and they had the, the position to do that. And certainly, that's that's a a, a deal that you, you see more of now than you probably did at that point. Like the that the, the stars and directors had leverage to, you know, even ask the studio for something like that. Yeah, there was a time where you had that, and then you get sort of less of that because part of the problem you had is you had so much kind of creative accounting that went on and lawsuits yeah. over that that a lot of times they just sort of said, let's just get our money out, you know, let's just get our money. And there have been, it depends, if you're powerful enough, whatever, but there have just been enough examples of like studios screwing over whoever they can. Or you know, you look at like yeah. like Peter Jackson, right? Didn't he? He had a, a huge lawsuit with New Line over the Lord of the Rings movies. Yeah, because they didn't make a profit, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, the hugely unprofitable Lord of the Rings franchise. Yeah, it happens. So, anyhow, uh, Twins is my pick. You know, it's a fun movie. It was a cool part. There's a scene in there where we watch a car pull into the supermarket, and it's the supermarket across the street from me, and I see my apartment. I'm like, wow. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I'm like, I know this place. <laughs> I was there 20 minutes ago getting ice cream. That's amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> Can I share a pick? Yeah, please. Oh. Uh, I, uh, I I talked about this I last week last on Cord on. Killers, and uh, I, I I watched it and I really liked it. Um, we talk about a lot of new shows on there, and so there's there's stuff that I'll watch for the show to report on it, um, but then there's stuff that'll really catch me. And this really caught me in a surprise. It's a new Netflix original anime called Devilman Crybaby. Uh, it is a re boot sort of of a an old anime from i want to say the 80s or the late 70s uh and it's about a a boy who gets caught up in uh the fight uh between heaven and hell on earth and gets possessed by a a, de a devil uh but because he is of pure heart uh, instead of being possessed by the devil he absorbs his powers and sort of becomes an anti-hero to try to save the day and and save his his family and, and his friends and what i what i really dig about it is that it is really fast and tight in a way that a lot of anime is not always you get right into the action and it's not a lot of over exposition which i think works well in its favor and it's also really short it's only 10 episodes and they're all a half hour and the soundtrack is is great it's got this like uh uh, uh kind of you know that kind of in uh, you know that in style of like a dark 80s electronic vibe and uh, you know some callbacks to the original music to the original show it's really cool and I I think I think a lot of people would like it even if they're not into anime at all um, but it is kind of wonky some of the art style is is <laughs> often very bad or like off model what we what we consider off model but like all the time, so everyone kind of looks a little different in every shot, just huh. because of just because of the style. But it 
it's it's really cool. It is also very mature. It's not for the kids. A lot of a lot of T, a lot of A, and some some V. Uh, but it's 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 really cool. It's Devil Man Cry Baby, and it's on Netflix. I've actually heard a uh, uh, positive buzz on this. Like people in my in my uh, Twitter timeline uh, have, have have talked it up, and not just the mm. not just the weebs. <laughs> right. Dude, eight out of ten on uh, IMDb. That's pretty big for uh, for an anime. Yeah, it, it, it's incredible, and I think, oh, I I think if if you're if it sounds like you might like it, I think you really should just try the first episode, uh, because it gets you a good sense of like the 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 really brisk pace, and also the very the like surreal element of it. Uh, but, gambling man in the chat says, "Let's be clear, Devil Man Crybaby is borderline NC seventeen in the yes. first episode. You Just... see, there are, there's a lot of exposed breasts throughout the series, and a lot of." Yeah. Um, just barely covered up hoo-hahs. Yeah, wow. Um, and there's, there's of course, a... by that point, I've <laughs> seen everything. <laughs> but it's too late. <laughs> well, they're, they're also just like depictions of sex uh, and, and, and sexual acts. It's, but it's also very violent. It's also super violent, and we have nothing to say about that. So, <laughs> so yeah, check it out. Thanks. Very good. Ah, so uh, this was a trial feature. Bryce makes a pick. Uh, let us know how that worked out for you. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Whatever happened? Uh, Didn't Bryce used to make picks? <laughs> yeah, we let him make a pick, and it was uh, uh, it was a little bit, uh, well, you know, on the borderline there. <laughs> no, uh, sounds good. Yeah, I've seen that. I've heard a lot of good talk about that. Um, but uh, uh, I know it might offend my prurient interests. Um, gentlemen. It's been weird. Yeah. So when I say when I end the show, I say it's been weird. It's, it's, it's been weird. So. Groovy. All right. um, can I take a couple minutes? Yep. To... Roger. Yeah, for sure. Uh, right. Yeah, we're going to take a little break. Hello. But, uh... Yeah, Devil May Cry Baby. Very good. I... I, I think I went through it all in in one or two nights, and it's it's stunning. It's it's fantastic, um, and it's also just like fun. It's it's I don't know. It does a lot of stuff that you would think like, oh, that's stupid. That that's out of taste and not very good. There's there's a bit. There's a character. There are a couple characters who like like kind of kind of rough kids, and and they rap. And so even if you watch on English dub, which isn't all right, the dub's okay. Uh, they keep it in Japanese. The rap, these rap sec- sections, where it's just the guys rapping, and it and it kind of gives uh, some character building on like the world that they're living in, and they're part of Japan. And um, I don't know, it's it should be stupidly corny, but it works out really well. I also just started playing, or started. I picked up again. Final Fantasy 15. A friend had let me borrow it for a while, and then Redbox was having a sale, and so I was able to buy it for like five bucks. Uh, that game is bad in a lot of just a lot of ways that you would think. How how could you make a bad game like this, Square? You know. Uh, Wait, what game? What game is that? Uh, Final Fantasy 15 from uh, 2016. <laughs> yeah. Bad, huh? It's it's so weird because there's like parts of it that are so incredibly like really polished, right? Like all the the graphics, the character models and stuff, the the UI and stuff is all like really intricate and nice. But you know, you go to talk to someone and the cameras are all screwed up and they they they're screwed up in a way so you can't see that there's like no lip sync going on and there are thirty different accents going on at any one time. Half the people have British accents and. You got country yeehaw accents and oh really? Yeah, it's it's kind of a mess, you know. And you look at all the things around it, like all the huge like sponsorship elements. Uh, <laughs> there's a big part of the game where you, you where you stop frequently and like take a rest or go camping to like um, collect all of your EXP or something. Yeah, and the camping is sponsored by Coleman. So everyone sits in Col- largely oh, branded Jesus. Coleman chairs That's with crazy. their Coleman tent, and there are billboards for Nishin Cup noodles everywhere. Um, because and you're driving. Also, you're driving a lot in like real time. Like Dude. like desert bus. 
Like you're just uh, constantly on the road? Kind of, kind of. Though, like, you have a dr- one of the guys in the group will drive for you, so he could drive for you, but you can pay to just uh, to get there immediately, or you can drive there in real time, and they give you, like, oh, it'll take you four minutes of real time to drive to this location. And it's like, that's whack and do. That's really so wait, crazy. was there, wait, wasn't there, like, be, be, did people like this, or, or was this universally understood to be a pile of poop? Uh, I mean, I think it was received mediocrely, because also the storytelling is bad. Um, there's there's a part very early on in the game where something very cataclysmic happens, and it explains none of it because they made a movie, a CG movie, about that event. And so they show you like 10 seconds of that. That's Wait, a clip. Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within? No, 15. Oh. No, they, they made, it's called King's Glaive. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so wait, they just like drop in some other stuff that happened in another movie and they're like, anyway, here's five minutes of that movie. Not Go even buy five it. minutes. Five minutes would have been great. But it's like, oh yeah, that place blew up. So. <laughs> Tur- turns out Bryce Vegas uh, <laughs> wasn't meant for this world. Yeah. Uh, hey, so. I don't. I don't think we'll do it in after things because I don't think it'll be good radio. But okay. um, but have oh, you, you seen? Clip? Have you seen this Beat Saber gameplay? I haven't. Oh my gosh! Uh, this is. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. I saw this on on Twitter. This looks great. Dude, look at this game. This looks like the audio surf VR. Oh, huh. So there's arrows. Yeah, you have to hit the top or the bottom, and then it gets get ready. Then that drop. Wow. Doesn't that's, that look awesome? That's intense. God, rhythm games stress me the F out. Oh, I don't know man. What... That reminds, that looks like the Audio Surf VR in a, uh, yeah, in a yeah, sense. Yeah, it's, it's, but, but it's a different dynamic. You're holding two lightsabers, man. So uh, in the full game, uh, in fact, that upper left one there, you get to see a little bit more of the gameplay. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's stuff where uh, another dynamic is it'll send these walls of energy at you that you have to dodge to the left and to the right mm-hmm. as you continue to do the battle on. Oh, wow. So it does this, and then you have to see. Oh yeah, I and see. then you know you have to lean to left, and then you have to dodge to the right, and and so you end up doing this elaborate dance, essentially playing air drums and rocking the hell out how's, with how's the soundtrack. Good, good music. Uh, I mean, you that one bit. I probably have watched that video fifteen times. Here, turn this up. You can get a taste of it too. And so is this out yet? Or no, it's uh, uh, no that that footage was basically the dude just tweeted out, having a good time making my game. I recorded a little bit of it for you, and then everyone <laughs> and it just exploded overnight to like a half million views. Oh, cool. But I like that I like that down up dynamic, and then adding in the left right because really what you're doing at that point is is conducting, like you know down yeah. up left right that kind of crap. I wonder if this is. It, have they said what it'll come out to? Because this is a PlayStation blog, which makes me think this is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, allegedly, it'll be PSVR, Vive, and Oculus. Which I mean, this this could be a killer, uh, a killer thing. And I like. Uh, I think it's a little more visceral than uh, Audio Shield, Justin, because Audio Shield, you know, it's cool that you're blocking everything, but but there's something about being the attacker that I think will feel pretty cool. Oh yeah, no. I mean, I think it'll, it, it looks. It looks. Good. I mean, for anybody who's, who's into rhythm games, like that looks awesome. Yeah. I wonder if they'll have any trouble with calling them sabers or like having a lightsaber looking thing. Yeah. Call it a saber. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, they can't. Uh, I think. I think there's prior art. Star on... Wars presents beat sabers. I mean, actually, to be honest, that would make me hate it if it had the Star Wars name on it. Like they've made. Word... Did you see the Star Wars dancing game? The though? fucking connect thing. <laughs> And they changed the words. And they made original I'm happy, music. I'm happy. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, I played another game, but I might save that for a after things pick. Um, I, watched, uh, I watched Counterpart. What, what oh, yeah. What did you think? Oh, this is but, the J.K. Simmons but, Fucking thing, loved it. Right? Uh, yeah, it, was, it. J.K. Simmons was enough to get me to sign up for th- stars for a fourth time. And uh, also the fact that the showrunner... 
tweeted me personally and said, "Watch it." <laughs> oh, really? I, I I said I said, "Hey, this looks amazing," but I'm like, Ugh, "Do I really want to sign up for Stars again?" I was like, "Should I?" And then the showrunner, just, all caps, just said, "Yes." <laughs> hey, what? A man's out there. <laughs> Uh, uh, is how many episodes are out? Only one. That's the problem. This what? whole waiting week for another episode because it's a real network. It's a, a it quote unquote real TV sure. show, Man, which is a real a, bummer because I'm I'm not going to enjoy waiting. Yeah, week, week after week. Oh, uh, I started watching um, Electric Dreams. Oh, Katie, how Katie is that? It's it's good, but you can ver- you all of the things about Philip K. Dick's writing that makes it very much of its time still come through a lot mm-hmm. you know it's 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 weird because i want to compare it to black mirror which is also like high tech right thriller horror sort of anthology yeah anthology style but uh this is very where like black mirror is trying to be very contemporary in its storytelling this is very like futuristic sci-fi high tech um and so it's more about like, oh, war, oh, you know, uh, corporate and and artificial life, and you know, um, uh, it, I don't know. It's 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 a, it's a weird thing. They they clearly have a big budget, um, but they're still I don't know. There, there's a thing. Okay, so have you see, read a lot of Philip K. Dick's short mm-hmm. stories? Yeah. There's always like like two twists in right. every in every story, and. In some of the episodes that I've watched so far, having that be and ta- having that take an hour works, and in some of them it really starts to drag at the end because like, they're padding out. Well, yeah, or because like I see where this is coming because this is no longer like a surprising trope. So we can just finish the rest of the last five. By the way, when, when you when, when you're talking about Electric Dreams, we're talking about the 1980s movie where the computer comes alive after beer is poured on it and they. <laughs> try to seduce a girl and the computer falls in love with the girl and it becomes super <laughs> yeah, intelligent and it ends with I'll stop the world and melt with you. That does sound like it could have been an episode of this. <laughs> also boy, George <laughs> made also, a song for it. They also like got like a lot of big names. Like, I, like I think people knew Brian Cranston was involved. He's in the third oh, episode, but yeah, I didn't. Oh, I think that, I think that was a thing. Cause he's like an executive producer and he's in, or he's in multiple episodes or something, but like they got, they got Janelle Monet. Uh, to funny enough to play a uh, a robotic woman, which is like her whole steez. Like that's her whole. That was basically her music career. Um, and then the first episode has oh Terrence Howard from uh, uh, uh hey, r- real quick just for scheduling. Yeah. Um, uh, are we uh, are we down one Andrew Main or I don't know. Um, is he? He was mentioning you might have to go take a call. Right, and it looks like he has done that, and I don't. Should we should we start without him, or because uh, I don't want to I don't want to go past four since I'll have more than usual to do for cord killers. Let me text <clears throat> him real quick and see if he. Can oh, by the way, speaking of which, if there's enough of a break, if you want to watch uh, Counterpart, uh, I'm logged in. You can just watch it on uh, on there. Oh, cool. And then, uh, then at least you and I could talk about it in spoiler in time. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe I'll do that. Because otherwise, I I, I told. I told Tom last night that I was watching it, but he was like, ah, too late, I'm in bed. Mm. Also, get off my lawn. Knock it off with your jazz music. I'm Tom Merritt. (laughs) He's like, I'll bet you don't even talk about me in your post-apocalyptic future role-playing game. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What else? What else? So, yeah, I, I texted Andrew. We'll see. We'll see what's going on with him. Did you get stars through Amazon again? I did, yeah. because it was so easy to unsubscribe last time. <laughs> are you gonna Are you gonna try again with America Gods? Uh, maybe. Maybe. It was just not fun. It was slow and plodding, and and it held up an uncomfortable mirror because like they got it right. And just has three but, minutes. But it's like they got it right. But I'm like, but I remember liking it in the book, and I remember you know, sure, dude bets his life on a checkers game with a guy he just met for no stupid reason mm. i'll buy that in a book did not buy it in but, the show i'm like yeah, this yeah. is dumb this is really dumb and i didn't really like animation it. Yeah. <clears throat> i uh i i haven't been i have so i've got movie pass and i haven't been out to the movies in a minute 
and there's stuff that's coming out, and I don't and I don't want to miss stuff. I want to go see Itania and uh, uh, Itania. It's pretty good. Uh, there's something else. If Coco's out, I'd I'd go see Coco again. Uh, no, you got to see Paddington too before you see Coco. I mean, that's a cultural icon. It's a, the fourth movie ever to have a 100 score on Rotten Tomatoes. You don't want to. You don't want to be the guy that saw all that movie. So, uh, I mean, okay. even if uh, there's a hundred percent, I feel like the conversations you're going to randomly get into about Paddington Two would probably be less than the Pixar movie, right? And I've seen Coco. I, 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 um, I don't know. Like, is it okay? Like, Paddington Two is still at a hundred percent. So we did. We did. I did. I think I asked you this the other day. Like, Paddington Two. Is it like, is is it how much of it is a kids movie versus? Uh, like it it, 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 it tracks movie. very very close to my experience of watching the Fantastic Mr. Fox, which I don't think I don't know if you've I, ever yeah, seen. seen. Yeah, uh, uh, I bought that one so you could watch that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so, I don't know. I'll, I'll, uh, I mean, but you've I, seen you've seen the preview for like uh, Wes Anderson's uh, Isle of Dogs, right? I did, yeah. I think I saw the trailer for that. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, that is uh, a, a kids' movie as well, and I guess so. you know, yeah. Right. Paddington Two just looks a little cutesier. It's got that that warm golden glow, you know, yeah. and then feel good vibes and whatnot. But they do a, they do a really good job of inoculating you against the idea of you know an anthropomorphic talking bear in in London and nobody. Really questions being, it. Yeah, exactly. They're more annoyed by it. By it. They're like, oh, a bear. Yeah. Yeah. What's the world come to? Well, because I, I saw the trailer for Paddington 2 at the same time, uh, or at the same screening I saw a trailer for, um, what is it? Uh, Peter Peter Rabbit? Peter Cottontail. Oh. Okay. I was like, okay, so. And oh, yeah, like, with James Corden? Yeah. And then. And he's like, like oh, I'll get, uh, we're in a rivalry, me and the cats. new boyfriend. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, it's a boyfriend. Yeah, that's weird. Anyway, hi, welcome back, Andrew. Hi, guys. You guys want to do a uh, proofing after things? Yep. Yes. All right. uh, we, we do got to keep it to the top of the hour. Yeah. If we can, please. See if we play. That means please. I think that means please. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I just insulted him, didn't I? I uh, he <laughs> speaks French and I don't, and now this is all. Pardon, awkward. pardon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you good, Andrew? Never speak French to me. <laughs> all right, take it away in three, ten. Welcome to After Things, the show that we do after weird things. But after weird things just sounded weird, so we called it. <laughs> After things, I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Well, hi. And our producer, Pepe Le Bryce Castillo. <laughs> Pepe Le Bryce! Adieu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, just you said, said uh, goodbye. He, made a he asked me politely in French, and every time I hear C. <laughs> play, all I think is, mmm, souffle. <laughs> I have, I literally have that moment in my head because you have some words you just sort of like. Sweet mint julep. <laughs> yeah, like it's like I remember I did one of those language tapes once trying to learn Spanish. And like they show like a dog, a perro, but like they talk about like a pirouette and a dog spinning. So whenever I see that, I see a dog here. Perro, I think of like a dog in like a ballerina outfit, you know, so I do this. Hmm, it's a very interesting mental imagery here that I don't think I needed to have. <laughs> so, anyhow, hi, how are you? Good, good. I, I'm uh, doing. I'm, I'm doing great. I got crazy allergies, but outside of that, I'm 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 good. Continuing to work at the gym, that that's good. Well, well, we we talked about like leveling up. That was going to be our goal this year. We we're going to try to level up. And um, do you remember how like 2017 went by like really really fast? Yep. Yeah, we were talking on weird things about the idea of like going in a crowd chamber and then just just weeks pass. Uh, that's life. <laughs> that's that's exactly what actually happens on the daily. Yeah, 2017 for me was about three months long. Yeah, feels like it. Uh, now, do you feel like a lot of that was because you fell into a rhythm? Because I found that 
the fastest years of my life have been ones with the daily routine that is regular. And you just sort of look up, you're like, oh, it's already Monday again. It's already Monday again. Whereas um, the time I was on tour and it was always a different city, two to three cities per week, constantly on, on the road, constantly a quest. Every morning you wake up you'll, and you think in four hour increments, I'm either going to an airport, out of an airport, setting up a show, tearing down a show, uh, going on to the next place those seem like an eternity, like uh, five days would feel like, uh, man, that was a lifetime ago that I was in Iowa. I I hear you, and this is why I'm going to put together a new legislative legislative promote idea. Uh, I call it the uh, accelerated prison time and the idea that like these guys have it too easy because prison's the same every day and, and time goes by too it fast. Up. Make it real We're interesting. Gonna, like, stripe wallpaper today, you know, <laughs> polka dots today. You know, uh, tonight, all the all the announcements are going to be in Icelandic, you know, <laughs> it's a thought, it's a thought. May. I mean, it's kind of soft psychological warfare, but I very much appreciate where you're where you're coming from. <laughs> Just have it too easy. But, yeah, I think a lot of it has to do that. I had a I had I've talked about this before, like I had a lost year. I mean, I probably had like a lost decade, but I had a lost year where it was like I'd moved into my townhouse. I did the same thing I did. I came up with like, you know, two or three magic tricks that year, same routine, everything. And I swear to God, it was like I go walk into my townhouse, I set my keys down, and it was a Battlestar Galactica season two jump. And it's one year later. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, I have no idea what I, I'm like, if you ask me, what did you do like 2002 or 2003? I'm like, I know I had a girlfriend at the end of one, and I didn't for a while after that. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, that I'm kind of going through that right now because a big part of restructuring everything at the house has me driving my kid to school every day. And, uh, you know, so there's a rhythm. So I, I take the kid to school, and then I go to the gym, and then I do whatever. And because of the rhythm, time's going faster, but at least – at least I'm watching projects progress. And, and at the very least, you know, I'm now two and a half months into trying to get, you know, really kind of trying to do a decent body transformation. At, at, at the very least, I'm going to be able to point to this time, even if it does go by in a blink and say, oh, yeah, that's when I got fit, you know? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Justin? Um, You know, I mean, I, I would say really, uh, uh, yeah, when I'm productive is when things tend to have gone faster but uh you know last year definitely uh you know you, i kind of like lost a handle on it with the injury and uh or the back thing and and that was something where i like i i very much felt uh uh kind of annoyed that i i had like a year kind of taken from me you know like that that i was uh i, I did not have uh you know the the, the kind of mobility that would have uh, allowed me to kind of do more. And then, you know, realizing that that's probably even an excuse and I probably could have done more even with the limitations that I had. Uh, but, but yeah, no, I mean, I think like that's the one, the one different perspective that I have now is just like, you know, any kind of able bodied time is good. <laughs> there was a, a book written by a magician by the name of Giovanni Levera, who is from a Florida magician, really good, uh, I remember his lectures are fantastic and I never knew him that well, but I always enjoyed when he when he would come to lecture and talk and he had a book out and it's still available called uh, Live a Thousand Years, Have the Time of Your Life. And the whole idea is basically the premise is if you base your life on experiences, if you try to have more experiences, you're going to live. It's going to feel like a lot longer. And and I and I think there's so much truth to that. You know, I'm I'm going through um, kind of a weird, I don't want to say crisis of conscience or whatever, but I'm curious. I I have not, in the last five years or so, made as big of an effort as I used to to keep track of all the stories of all the awesome stuff I did in a while. Like at some point, you know, once the TV show came out um, and, and once Scam School hit a million subscribers, those stories kind of felt... Um, less appropriate to be constantly telling other people because it's like, yeah, no, we get it. You you're successful. And so I've, I've turned down the volume on that and I find myself wondering like, am, am I failing to save more of these interesting stories as a result of instead staying future focused and working on the next project? Like, 
you know, like uh, we've talked about this before. You know, there's that strange amnesia. Uh, the moment we do a podcast, someone comes up later is like, that was really hilarious when you said whatever. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that does sound like a thing I probably said, I assume. And, 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 and I guess my question is, do you think I'm robbing myself of the whole benefit of bothering of having to have those experiences? I'm not-, not a nostalgic guy, so I'm the wrong person to ask. And, like, I have that problem to the point that people are like, oh, this was so great when this happened. And close friends, I'm like, I have no recollection of that at all. That's entirely character with me, whatever I do. I just don't retain that stuff like other people do. Um you know, memento. I'm like, yeah, this isn't how everybody else lives. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, no, we all wake up with the post-it notes like this. Um, I had this 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 sort of epiphany yesterday because I was thinking about like, uh, so you know, we mentioned it before. I, I shoehorned it in. You know, I got nominated for an Edgar, and and you know, that is as a writer, um, you know, somebody like myself who's felt like an outsider, you know, trying to sort of justify, like, make my way in and who was extremely uncertain about my work, extremely like, I don't know if it's any good and I don't know if this book is people going to like it. And this is a book that like third book in a series and then it gets nominated for an Edgar Award, which for mystery is arguably the award. The well, most and, and prestigious that's, sort of, that's right? doubly important because, you know, if, if it wins or just being nominated is fantastic, but but it invigorated uh, energy into uh, a, a franchise that I, you know, you only have so much time and you go where the heat is. Uh, the mm-hmm. heat was not on this franchise until suddenly a switch got flipped. All right. I, 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 your primary heat, I, I guess you only have so much attention and a lot of it has been on naturalist stuff. Yeah. But I guess, I guess the thing I was going to say is that like, I'm like, okay, this is cool. This is this. I'm flattered. I'm excited. Meanwhile, I've got to go do this other thing because I have this other project in the works here. Naturalist has some cool stuff, you know, that's going through and going on in this. I've got another book that I've got to finish because some people are really eager for that. And that's got a big thing. And then I've got all these. And I'm like and I remember seeing because I was looking up the Edgar Awards. I'm seeing like these in these people like in their local newspapers. So and so got nominated for the Edgar local. So I'm like, I'm like, this is cool. But like, I'm also like, you know, but it's also kind of like, uh, when you're doing really when you're pushing yourself to do interesting things, you have a lot of interesting things happening around you. And and having something like this happen is really, really cool, but it's not the biggest story for 2018 for me. You know? But and, um, and by the way, the how great is that? that? How how great is that? I always think in terms of time traveling you. Go back to you ten years ago and say, Hey, by the way, uh in twenty eighteen you're at nominated for an Edgar Award. And then and then you're like, Oh, how wonderful. That means I make it as a and then ghost you pops back, you're like, Oh, also that's like the fourth most interesting thing. Bye. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and I, and I think that that's and again I don't want to I don't want to downplay and is maybe is Andrew secretly preparing himself to lose? No, I already know I'm going to lose. That's fine. Um, I it, it is I just nominate nominate for Edgar reads almost as well in copy as Edgar Award winning. You know, it's the way the mind reads that thing. The, the way I'm fine. Um, but point is, uh, trying to do a number of things, trying to do all, and that's the way it should be. You should be like, yes, this is great, but I'm working on this other thing. This is great, but. I'm trying this other book is what I'm excited about. Yes, this is great. I'm excited that book got attention. The next Jessica story is really what I care about. And so my point, I guess, is that I was thinking about this because I'm like, oh, this is really cool. I'm like, how many times does like a celebrity have a lot of really cool, interesting things happen to them that don't make the news because so many other things happen to them? I guess. Yeah, I mean, look, and and you probably have a great example in in that Arnold book that you've been reading that that there's you know, a, a million little tidbits that are there that, you know, are probably more interesting than, you know, what we would kind of classically define as either celebrity news or gossip, you know, or, yeah. or just the big headlines that kind of come from a career. So I'm going to, if I may, I'll, I'll diverge and I'll say that I've uh, been working on a new writing project and uh, I've been, it's been going slow. It's been going slow. And I've, I've been, you know, as a person who is, you know, just I'm trying to do juggle a lot of things. I'm trying to learn how to juggle and do a lot of things at once now where where I could just hyper focus on one thing. It's easy when you're trying not to. And I've come to a realization that, you know, I wrote a whole book on writer's block and sort of tried to get into sort of why things get, why we get blocked, how to fix it, whatever. And one of the points I've made in there is you have to understand 
it may not be that you're not you don't have the energy to do it. It may be that you don't know what to do. You think you know what to do, but you don't. You know, right, sitting down to write, like, oh, I have an idea for a story. I'm going to go do this. But you know what? Maybe you don't really have all the structure figured out. And the reason you're staring at the screen is like, I don't know where to begin. Like, yeah, because you haven't figured out what really happens. Sometimes it's an energy problem. Other times it's not knowing what to do. Often we don't work out because it's an energy problem. Like, I don't want to work out, you know. Uh, writing, you know, but the, the solution for working out is put on your gym clothes. You know, just put on your gym clothes. You'll be amazed at what will happen once you just make do that simple act. When it comes to writing, the problem can be you sit down, like, I'm in front of the screen. Why isn't this happening like working out? Well, working out is the same thing you did the week before and the week before. Here, you're trying to create something new. So little observation. Make sure you understand that either it's because it may not be a lack of energy. It may be just you haven't laid out your plan. It's like, I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint. I got my canvas. I got my brushes. Do you have any paint? Is that important? Do I need paint? <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, do, do you have any story that you want to tell with painting? Or like, oh, is, is that a thing painters do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I'll, I'll give you a great example. It's like my covers, you know, I, I do pretty good covers on my books. I'm no MS Corley who has been made both Pace Magazine and Entertainment Weekly's best covers of the year for my naturalist cover. But I do, but the way I do my covers, I can't sit, I do them all in Photoshop, but they don't start there. I got to sit down with a notepad and sketch stuff out. If I don't have a template of, person here this here whatever photoshop is not a sketching program you know it's not i mean maybe it can be but for me it's not and the same thing comes to writing i can't just sit in front of a blank screen and go i'm gonna write you have to ask questions you have to break down the problem what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish i guess what i'm trying to say really understand what the goal is before you try to go do this thing yeah no oh. so we're almost month is almost up feeling Already. good brian uh yeah dude um this was also a a, a birthday month so january is always a, a big month for me because it's the, the odometer flips over on the year you start thinking about goals and also my personal life odometer flips over um i i did have a uh some really exciting stuff's going on behind the scenes which i look forward to sharing with everybody but i think the thing that has me <laughs> happiest right now <laughs> um is uh uh is that uh things are just so busy and i think that's when i'm happiest is when i'm just moving from a thing that it's like you have no choice but to uh yeah, we've talked about this before but that's the seductive part about life on tour and i'm learning how to manufacture that life uh while not being on tour which is very exciting for me uh <laughs> so no pick yeah <laughs> oh wait, are, are we, were we going into picks, or uh, I thought you were just oh. asking in general about we're oh, one month into our right. to our life unlocking thing? Oh, uh, <laughs> Andrew, you muted yourself. You thought you muted <laughs> Andrew, yourself Andrew, when you uh, <laughs> yeah, he must, he must have muted himself right after sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, I went to mute myself to sneeze, and then apparently I unmuted myself. I did something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, sorry. So, so what, 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 what were you saying when you were muted? Uh, this year so far, I mean, do you feel you're on track? Or you? Oh really yeah, no, 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 very much so. And a big part of it is is just focusing so hard on the on the health and getting in shape stuff because that is the one that creates the. You get the serotonin rush of of you know once you worked out really hard during the day, wake up sore the next day, and you reminded that yesterday you kicked butt. I mean, to be honest, like uh, I I can understand why somebody like Jeff Bezos would spend a lot of money to make sure he ends up getting buff and, and ripped because that affects everything you do. You you think, no, screw it. Let's 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 eat that frog that has been sitting on our desk for a while. Yeah. Justin, you, same for you or um no. <laughs> Rather, no, not really, no. Uh uh you know, I mean th th this uh year is I mean there's a lot of cool stuff coming up and I'm I'm working on things that that definitely make me uncomfortable specifically with like the live shows and I'm working with somebody on uh, uh, trying to get a lot of, you know, my, my ducks in a row and I'm excited about stuff that's coming up, but to be, you know, brutally honest, uh, uh, you know, the, the, I didn't get back until nine days, you know, and, uh, into the month and, you know, I've had 10 or, you know, a little over 10 or 12 days since then. And three of them have been either traveling or somewhere where I wasn't working as hard as I needed it to. So, uh, 
you know, this is not, uh, 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 I think, me at peak efficiency. But then again, I might just be kind of uh, uh, down because I'm sick. So who knows? You know, in the Arnold Schwarzenegger book, one of the things he talked about was how much he's on the road, how much he's out traveling, doing talks, doing stuff like that, and how he kind of lives for that. And I thought that was a very interesting thing because I'm a person that, like, I hate to travel. I hate to do that because I don't get a right. I don't get stuff done. And I'm trying to get better and, you know, becoming more comfortable doing that. But it was interesting to see somebody who a large part of his success, not unlike Bob Hope, who made so many appearances and was around so much. And, you know, for me, who is this weird introvert extrovert, you know, look at a guy who is Arnold's clearly an extrovert, you know, and, and you know, that s- speaks to a large part of his success is and I've thought about like, man, can I can I learn to be a, you know, a road warrior? Can I learn to be a person that's OK traveling, going out there and doing stuff? Because I'm like, if I have like a couple meetings in a week. Like I won't book travel there, even though I could probably make it work. I just, you know, my stress level just goes up too much. So. I don't know. That might be my goal is just to try to be able to manage more stuff in inconvenient situations. So. That's actually uh, it's it's been weird. Uh, falling out of the rhythm of it uh, makes makes intimidate or travel more intimidating because uh, when you're doing it all the time. I mean, I guess Justin, you you've experienced this when you were mm-hmm. completely road warrioring. I mean, you took a personal pride of having your you know your your perpetual bug out bag exactly ready to go. You you know your exact uh, elite status, and and you just feel like you're floating above everyone else. But uh, it's been what a month? Uh, it, it, yeah, I think this will have been a two month stretch before I go do the show up in New York in Schenectady, and I'll have just been home that entire time. And weirdly, it makes it all more intimidating. It's it's a strange experience. Well, I think the 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 difference for me that I found was even when I was at the Go Game. Uh, the only times I would make mistakes is when I had like a week or two off. Yep. And, like and, that's and that, that's the way that, it was for me on this on the stage show. Uh, coming back after summer, those first few shows, rough, rough, rough as you've hit those rhythms yeah. again. Well, because part of it is just getting getting your life as optimized as possible. Uh, and, and you don't realize where exactly you're kind of shaving that time out of until you fall out of it. And it's not muscle memory. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but but yeah, you know, look, I, I think for for you, Brian, uh, there, but I've I've seen with you, you know, a, a a huge kind of difference between the the Brian that was off the road because there was other stuff versus the Brian that understands and appreciates what being off the road means, you know, uh, uh you know, because I think for for a while you were definitely kind of just hunting for that adrenaline that like that 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 you know, days in, days out, adrenaline rush. Yeah. And, and like the home base was like, no, that means, you know, that means I'm sober. <laughs> like, I, well, who, who wants that? Like, you know, <laughs> I, I used to do awesome adrenaline things every day and now I'm here. Like you, anybody else on the world <laughs> that I would talk all you, to. All you normies and plebs, I will not be one you. Uh, uh, if you're listening to people talk about doing kind of cool and interesting stuff and you feel left out like I did for most of my life. Like I want to be part of stuff that's cool and stuff. I want to be, I want my attention for my stuff. There are ways to do, there are ways to sort of become, uh, more active to gain more traction. And one of the things is that be a person that organizes things, be a person that makes things happen. And I, you know, it can be, you know, you could be a person at a party that gets not your party, but somebody else's that invites other people into a conversation. It can be as simple as seeing somebody standing by themselves. Say, hey, come on over here. Who are you? Oh, yeah, we're talking about this. What do you think about this? It's a very simple little social thing you can do to all of a sudden make other people part of something. People want to go where something interesting is happening. And if you're, you know, if you're a writer, hypothetically. If I was back in Florida and I was still trying to build up an audience or build attention for what I was trying to do, I'd probably try to find out like, hey, how many local writers are there in my area that are self-publishing, that are getting good reviews or doing stuff, and then reach out to them and say, hey, let's go put on an event. You know, Let's go put on a, writing, a free writing seminar at the local library. Let's go do something like this. Then all of a sudden, 
you become a nexus. You become a person that organizes and puts something together. And those things can actually be very easy to put together because you're creating an outlet for somebody else. Conventions, fan conventions started because people said, oh, man, I love this thing. And they're talking to some other random person like, yeah, I love this thing too. Well, let's go rent you know, a conference room somewhere and just talk about how much we love this thing. Uh, you know what I've started doing is uh, I, I've started giving myself permission. Like I just realized um, if you ever see a celebrity, uh, th there was a time I saw Ron Perlman uh, waiting for his luggage. And I told, I confessed to my friend who works over at Warner Brothers that I was too intimidated to say hello or anything. He's like, look, here's the thing. Nobody ever minds you just coming up saying, hey, I just wanted you to know I really dig your work. And you're done. <laughs> that's not true, but that's a delightful thought. Oh, really? Thought, though. Uh, oh, okay. I've got. I've had friends have got stories about like, you know, encounters with celebrities and stuff like that, where just that goes horribly awry. Oh, really? I have. I have. So, I'm not going to name names. Okay. So, uh, a friend of mine was at some what, event. What did uh, and, What did Cruz Billis say about? No, uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, 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 we'll just say that this person's a delightfully well loved. Actor, I actually once, you know, was in a bathroom at the ArcLight Theater, and he was the only other person there. And he just looks over me, nods, and I nod because uh, he's just trying to preemptively. But anyhow, um, this actor, famous actor, everybody knows who this person is. I know a magician who was at some event or whatever where he was there or whatever, uh, and hung out, talked to him a little bit, whatever. Long time later, this magician's with a couple other buddies or somewhere, and they see this other famous, super famous actor standing or somewhere or whatever like this and the one magician a super nice guy says hey it's so it's like yeah it's so and so it's like hey uh do you do you think i should say hello you know and they're like yeah sure you know like like you know it seems like the decent thing to do all right so he goes on over and goes and the, the way my friends were there describing it says we see him go and the <laughs> actor go <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> mouthing like just go away why are you bothering me leave me alone I, you know and the other guy just walks back across the street <laughs> it seemed like the decent thing to do <laughs> <laughs> so uh i'm gonna guess that uh uh i don't know it sounds like maybe it wasn't it, the the actor had the impression that they were being asked to do something more than accept a quick compliment or <laughs> I, I don't I this actor my encounter with my brief encounter was fine. I know somebody else had chatted and had a great encounter. I don't know what happened, but I was just that what I hear like, oh, but I've been at, I've been at parties and stuff and been and like in might have been party sort of thing where they're there they're there to hang out and socialize and stuff. Totally. I like, hey, I love and some of my friends who are some of my famous friends now sure. um, are people who I just came out like, hey, I dig this. I'm like, oh, cool. And they're like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, oh, this, oh, that's cool. And then I've made friends that way. By, and I think it, it's situational. So, a lot of so times I guess uh, uh, to my point, like what I've done, started doing lately because of that interaction, uh, flawed uh, though the intel may have been <laughs> upon further inquiry. Um, but I've started just dropping emails to to people to say that's great. The, the work. Uh, I dig your work. Um there's one. Uh, there's a program on the CBC the, uh, podcast that I assume plays on the radio called uh, uh, "Under the Influence." That's all about the advertising biz. This guy's been doing the show for 20 years, and I and I dig his stuff. And I was like, uh, you know what? He's not going to get mad because I sent him a short note saying, "Hey, I really mm -hmm. dig your stuff." And Absolutely. so I started doing that for everything, and about half of them bothered to respond, and they're like, "Hey, uh, that's very cool." But every so often, you get one of those electric sparks that uh surprises uh in in the case of um you know i 10 years ago right before we were launching scam school i was a fan of these online forums uh for something called pointless waste of time dot com and uh, uh there's this writer david wong and uh and this other guy john cheese and i've been following their stuff and then later david wong uh, uh folded his entire forums into cracked.com and it became part of that whole thing and, uh, or, you know, I've, I've started following uh, John Cheese, started swapping texts with him over Twitter, and uh, and then found out that, that he was one of the bazillion people that got uh, crap canned from crack.com and went away. And there's this moment that 
uh, that I was like, hey, man, is everything because we had been idly chit chatting and we had this vague. I like your stuff. Uh, we got to real talk and it turns out that he had been watching my stuff for years and it was this. And, and I realized like all of that was because of that extroverted kind of impulse. And now uh, it's too early to say what, but we're working on a thing. I think he announced it today. Uh, well, OK, well, he. he uh, yes, he did. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think. Yeah, he, he uh, no his, his, his Twitter laid out a fairly a graphic roadmap. Uh, well, we're trying not. I. The reason we, we I, said Monday, we said Monday. I, yes, we we all agreed. I, hear, I don't trust me. It's me I don't trust because I feel what are you like spoil. Uh, okay, I'm gonna spoil it. Uh, oh, oh, I mean, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna say what's gonna happen on Friday, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna say on Friday you should definitely go to the Modern Road. Is this the John Cheese where he says Twitter, where it says Dear Human? So my big project first go to. <laughs> yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Uh, but 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 no details. I will give no details about what will be there on Friday. But no, he <laughs> says. <laughs> he doesn't say the word. Of what, he says a lot of very specific. He said we talked about this. We had a whole meeting where we were like, no, "We'll announce it." On that's Monday. fine. That's fine. Look, I'm trying to play coy. Our whole plan. God, you. I, the whole plan was to let various I, outlets it. talk about it on Monday, but but give enough mysteries so that on Friday everybody shows up. Uh, and I, I, and I don't trust me. I don't trust yeah. me to not give up. Like So anyway, the first I article is going to be about... See, I do see a world where you're like, oh man, we're doing this. Alright, here's a link to the article. Ahead <laughs> I, of time. I, I, this is me trying okay. to... I, no, I, you're not. Respect. I, respect. That's right. I'm, 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 I'm yeah. Odysseus tying himself to the mast. <laughs> so it's like, I will not be the one to spill the beans on everything. Okay. Uh, but anyway, all of that came about because of that 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 extroversion thread, right? That 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 want to reach out and and create something and be part of something. Yeah, I think I think the key is you know it's it and and a hundred percent your point. I think that's certain socially there's situations like yeah, so and so is over at the table. Or, yeah, don't 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 go bother them. You know, so they're 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 they probably maybe they're cool, maybe they're not. Some people are, some of them. But like yeah, email. They have an email. Hey, I love what you do. It's great because it's there's no nothing. You're not asking anything. They open up their inbox. They know they're accepting people. You know, time. They go to a party. Yeah, talk to them. Say hello. Talk to them. You know. Uh, you know, that's fine. You know, these things like, don't be afraid to say, I like what you do. I like what you do. And, and that's the thing is sometimes there's a transaction where it's, and can I get a photo and can I get this or, and can I get that? And then it's like, uh, some yeah, people love I, it, I think some the one thing don't. that is universal, be it brevity in an email or brevity in a one-on-one -on -one encounter is be the one to punch out. No, yeah. no, when, the best interaction with somebody that you don't know that probably gets talked to a lot is to just be say your piece and then say goodbye. <laughs> like there that was... is that that is one thing that I think that is always well appreciated, even if that person is very, very aggravated and irritated, like a at least let them be yelling at you while you walk away. <laughs> There was a uh, article about I forget which author, some super reclusive kind of author who had a house in the middle of you know some New England place or something like this, and this woman goes to the door or whatever, knocks on the door, big fan or whatever to go talk to him. Oh, I just want to say hello, and got the response was like I don't have time. He's like, there are ten thousand of you and only one of me, and he shuts the door, <laughs> which is like it was a little bit gruff, but. I mean, yeah, and the point, uh, but that's a different situation. That's that's invading someone's personal space and 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 oh and for sure, but also real but time attention. Like, but like people are like, oh, he didn't respond to my letter. There's like, it's like, listen, like this guy's like, if you responded, if people, you you meet us like I'm meeting so and so, and it's very important in your life. You know, when I've met somebody celebrity, like oh my god, I'm meeting this person. Like yeah, it's it's. That happens. They, they meet people fifty times a day who Man. have that reaction, you know. But that, but that's the weird part. Is that asymmetry? Like it, it really makes it a challenge to navigate that, knowing that you are just having a casual conversation, but the other person is 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 having a moment, you know. And uh, uh, I don't know. That's challenging and terrifying yeah. for me. Yeah. Like uh, me. A every, every is, am I the only one that doesn't give a poop about famous people? It's like, well, I mean, that's that's something that uh, don't think of it as this uh, as a conversation about fame. Think of it as a conversation about the people that you find interesting, be they, you know, famous or or not. You know, I think we all have people that we look up to and admire or art that we connect with, like uh, that expressing that kind of gratitude in person make would would theoretically make one happy. And I think that's that's kind of the soul of what we're getting to, not necessarily like, hey, you were on the TV. I, I like you now. <laughs> yeah, because I hear like I don't care. I'm like I'm like I don't. I'm like I don't get like 
stars are. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's so and so. But I, I, but then again, they're like, well, I think this cool person's cool. Like, I just, I, I'm for me, it's like people are like, oh, would you like to meet Elon Musk? I'm like, why? So I can waste his time. <laughs> you know, so it could take five minutes out of his time away from the Tesla Model Three shipping or us getting to Mars. Like, yeah, I would have a dumbing effect on that guy. You know, yeah, but you also might give him new ideas. I don't count on that. <laughs> um, there was this. There was the description of like how he talked about. There was this. This. Oh, Elon Musk is at some you know Bay Area sex party, right? And Elon Musk commented about this. He says like I didn't know it was a sex party. I showed up, and he says I. And he wrote. He wrote. He said some like. Quote, I was getting hounded by uh, startups, you know, yeah. and hounded. And you're like, and the, the truth is the term hounded. It's like, yeah, he shows up at this party, and then everybody's swapping, you know, flocking around this guy. And it's like, oh, yeah, I don't know. You know, fire him. I don't know. If, I, don't, I don't know what the positive is there, you know. Yeah. Um, so idiots I, like, I, I, you I know ducked under a pile of rice bodies to get away from the pitch hounds. Yeah. Yep. So. Anyhow, uh, thought, uh, but we're approachable. <laughs> Please approach we us. Are. No, really, right now, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> somebody, somebody, recognize me, please. No. Um, um, uh, you, you say that, and then it happens. And then it's weird. It weird. <laughs> I just, I, I had a, a, a mother come up to me. I was at Disneyland, and this standing there, this little kid goes and hides behind his mother. Sees me, hides behind the mother. I'm like. I've never had that reaction before. And the mother goes, he's seen your show. He's afraid of you. <laughs> it's, oh, uh, that's funny. I'm like, I don't want to. No, I was hurt. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to. That is one of the weird things about how, about being at, on the, um, uh, for, forgive me for including both of us in this, but, but I would say some of the lowest rungs of fame enough, enough where you do get recognized. And that is a real thing, but, Largely, you get to live your life as a normal human being, I, and then I, you encounter I, someone. I, every, I would say every time I hang out with you guys, somebody comes up and is like, "Hi, is that Justin Robert Young? I recognize the voice. Are, are you Brian? Are you Scam School?" I would say that's happened. I've been with with Tom, and that's happened. I see that happen a lot. That that is the uh, weirdest ones are people who freak out when they recognize the voice, realizing they've never known what we look like. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're like, oh, "Wait, I know that voice." Yeah. But I've yeah, been, I, I've been I, both you guys I have in a line at an Apple store once, and uh, <laughs> the dude just kept, like, edging around to find out if I was who I was. He was, like, leading me. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, hey, uh, I, I got a quick pick. Um, go go watch Counterpoint. Go subscribe to Stars and watch uh, – or uh, not Counterpoint, Counterpart. Ignore that first pick. My real pick is Counterpart yeah. with J.K. Simmons. Uh, it's on Stars. Uh, it's a very simple idea. There were there was one planet, and now there's two, and there's a very narrow split in between the two. And most of the world doesn't know that the other one exists, and almost nobody ever gets to meet their titular counterpart, except uh, J.K. Simmons does, and it's uh, it's pretty great. Is it? I mean, that's cool. I watched. I love J.K. Simmons. The the trailer. I'm like, man, like this feels like kind of like it's familiar a territory. It's, it's familiar territory. However, it's J.K. Simmons, and you're not watching it because you haven't ever heard an idea like this before. You're watching it because J.K. Simmons is one of the most gifted actors of our age, and watching yeah, him and play amazing. opposite himself is mesmerizing. It's hypnotizing. It's great. Cool. Yeah, I love him. So. Cool. On your recommendation, Brian. Woo! I would do that. Justin, any uh, other picks? Yeah, there's a new podcast called Origins, and I forget who does it, but it, 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 it's a, a, a an author of one of my favorite, uh, and or James Andrew Miller. He has uh, uh, primarily done over the last few years uh, a book about ESPN and a book about ICM or maybe CAA. One one of the big agencies out in uh out in hollywood uh but he is famous for his writing style being uh all quotes so he'll set up certain issues and then basically let the people who are actually there tell their own story and so he has spun that into a podcast and they've done it's all focusing on the origins of various tv shows and and outlets and movies and stuff like that but uh it, it has been really really good so far not the least of which because that dude's got a Rolodex 
and when uh, and when he wants to talk to the you know primary movers and shakers, he's talking to the primary movers and shakers, be they CEOs, producers, actors, former uh, employees, uh, and he's got the kind of stroke that he'll get, you know, in like the ESPN example, like not only the CEO on the podcast, but also the like embattled bitter ex employee. And and that's not usually the kind of thing that like the CEO wants to be involved with. They are when uh, when James Andrew Miller uh, asks. So uh, I would say uh, you can start with the first one, which is about curb your enthusiasm. Uh, or if you're into the media world, the ESPN ones are great. But go ahead and check that out. Origins. Cool. Uh, one of your picks from before, which I've been enjoying, has been Axios. Oh yeah, I dig Axios. It's uh, it's it, it's quick but good. So Axios is a news site. And they break it down pretty pretty simple. They try to be pretty objective about it. Of course, you know the, the issue of any time is you know, your the stories you select will will expose your biases or what have you. But I like it. It seems it's a very stripped down, streamlined news source. You know, when you try to read an article on something and you get five billion pop ups and news and things like, you know, videos start playing, it's a very frustrating experience. You know, and it's it's the challenge of news these days is that it's just this commodity that's, you know, there's more and more content out there and less money into it and it makes it frustrating. And then all the fake articles on the side. And that's what's disturbing now is like, you know, like you see the fake articles, articles that pop up on the side because some algorithms decided, oh, this is this is going to get you to click, you know, um, you know, and like my favorite latest one is how to make an atheist shut up in 30 seconds. And it's this photo of like this angry looking homeless kind of guy, <laughs> you know, <I'm> like <laughs> turns out the answer is uh, I respect that you have different beliefs than me. Yeah. Yeah. We can all yeah. live together and get along, you know, which is, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, good. Yeah, that's. That's what I say to my, you know, those made? who's making those, those fake article things with like the pictures. Like, is that all just like algorithm or is, is I think like, those are human. I think there are people there that are writing, you know, like, how do you like, oh, OK, we got like, because, you know, I go, I, I, I linked out a thing to CNN and so I was like, oh, you're at CNN. I'm like, I read everything. I, you're not going to you're not going to know if you looked at what news sites I go to, you're not going to know what my beliefs prop maybe you would but you but i mean you would i'm across yeah. the spectrum what i go to so i go everywhere and so um because i want to know like what do these people say why do these people interpret it and all that but uh i saw that was like on a conservative site so they presume that like i'm probably like super religious and you know i want to shut yeah. those atheists up in a good christian way <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I, I, the, the thing I can't stand is is all of the ads. We've talked about this before, but it's like, man, if you want to remember a product or service you purchased uh, for the next three weeks, uh, ever look at anything on the web ever. Oh, I, <laughs> like, I, I ordered an exercise bike. Right. And that's you know, a nice higher ticket item. So what do I get still exercise bikes? But then what's funny is I got to one site and i get this come to israel and it's like three dudes and like tiny speedos walking along and two of them are holding hands i'm like i went to israel and i know that's part of what's in tel aviv but that's not what i liked about it and then i then oh a few days later i get come to like, israel oh, whatever beautiful girl by. you know bosom me and i'm like you're like you're hmm. testing you're testing me yeah uh I've, uh yeah, no, that stuff is. Uh, you you are not lying. The fastest way to see a million ads for something is to buy it online. Yeah, for whatever yeah, yeah. reason, that's the cookie that they can't. They can't. The the, the elusive. I already bought it. Cookie. Uh, uh, that's that's something that is not shared uh, throughout the web because every time you buy any like buy a printer, hey, would you want to buy seventeen more printers? Look <laughs> at all these printer deals. <laughs> No, I definitely, uh, definitely am still getting the hard sell. I should experience. I fly. Even kids can fly in a tube, at I fly. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I do a lot of research for my books, and then I get all these ads that come up to now, like I, above ground pools, tons of above ground pools, jet leasing. You know, now I'm like, yeah, you want to rent jets? No, really, you should. If you want to rent a jet, rent it. I'm, a, I'm an author. I don't think this is really practical, but anyhow, <laughs> gentlemen, it's been after. I didn't know if I could share it in the show, but um, that whole, you know, we all make the joke of, oh, my search history is going to get me in trouble. Uh, behind the scenes gossip, uh, one of the editors at Cracked has a book, how, how, to, how to Fight a President. Um, 
definitely really <laughs> at some point ended up with somebody downtown explaining why all of his research is about how to beat up presidents. <laughs> Uh, that's great. Okay. Uh, all right, boys, I'm gonna uh, hit the sack. Uh, uh, I love you. All right, yeah, let's 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 shut this off because there's a secret thing I want to share with uh, with both Andrew and Bryce and Justin if he can stay awake. <laughs> all right, anyway. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. We'll be back for Porkulars very soon. <laughs> <laughs>